question of the week. Um, you guys have encountered different creatures now, but in terms of um, in in universe, what kind of what type of creature is your character most intrigued by? It could be like a a magical creature, just anim- certain types of animals in general. Obviously, not like races, like elves. You're not going to be yeah. Uh, putting in as an answer, but like being as this kind of system it is, dragon would be obviously an answer for some. Uh, Maybe say, someone's really interested in a sphinx. I would say chimeras because what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> the dread Ursagriff. No. Nah. That is legend. I'm going to go with giants. Just all giants in general. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Sinotar, a combination between a centaur and a minotaur. Wait, is that actually a thing? (laughs) You know, I wouldn't put it past. Like, (laughs) you used to do something like that. The top half of a minotaur and the bottom half of a horse. That actually sounds (laughs) terrifying. I mean, a bull man horse, a cent, a centaur, but the man half is a bull man. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of been done. So would that be like a torrentor? <laughs> image, image in the chat there for you. Is that a Zelda character? Yep. Wow. Those things will, don't don't mess with those. Those things will kick your ass if you're not ready. <laughs> I mean. Um, it's... It's kind of half horse, half old lion thing. As a goblin, what would he, what creature, particularly one that I would know about? You could also go the other way. As a druid, what might you be interested in? <laughs> a centaur, uh, a centaur bit by a werewolf. So it is both dog and horse. <laughs> dog and horse and cow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh god, a were centaur would probably be the most nightmarish creature for goblins. <laughs> Without a doubt. Um, you know what? To connect it back around, um, Gogmer is pretty interested in whatever happened to that were rat guy. So I'll say were rats because he just wanted to put him out of his business. But I don't think he would have seen a were rat before. Yeah, it definitely probably would have been a, a fresh sight for you. Generally, where anything, especially in goblin communities, probably wouldn't last very long, or they would eat the entire tribe. Mm-hmm. Six, and six, five, connect five, it five. back around. Wait, connect it back around. Zarong, Zarongal is depicted as kind of a half-goblin, half-wolfish thing. So, bam. <laughs> there you go. Fix would probably be a Dwemer cat. A what cat? Dwemer. D W E O M E R cat. Okay. Don't even know what those are. I had to look up some magical bees for that. I think that was one of the ones that stuck out that seemed the most intriguing. Well, that is pretty neat. Magical beasts. Gotcha. So, what about Reesh? I'll just cop out and say dragons, because magic. Magic and lizardy. Mm-hmm. Ironic that it probably had the least in common with white dragons, seen as they're from snowy, cold areas. <laughs> um, anyone want to do a quick recap of what happened last session? Uh, spooky house. <laughs> More I- or less. I shouted a confusing sentence at uh, Emmanuel to stop him from pushing us all outdoors into murderous birds. Mm-hmm. After you already pushed and Gog well, outdoors push. to murderous birds. Mm-hmm. Murderous crow murders. Yep. Uh, Hitchcock, why? Yeah, you would come down to this um, haunted um, mansion, um, Fox Club Manor, known as the Misgivings by locals. Um. As soon as you entered, you already felt something uneasy kind of about the whole place. Um, but as you began to experience some haunts that um, happened to you, um, one of them, a scarf trying to strangle Lucilla, um, a woman pacing invisibly in another room, 
influencing Emmanuel's mind to get out of the house before they kill they kill you and your child, which coincidentally um, you saw as Gogmert deciding as you um, explored the first floor to come down to the basement. You heard the skittering of little feet before um, uh, swarms of rats um, began to attack you, inflicting um, some wounds and infecting, um, I believe it was Scrimshaw, as well as um, Juan, with another type of illness that you don't really know of. But as like the battle kind of concludes and you see Juan doing a final like snake like twist to one of the rats, um, a- another cinematographical moment where you kind of zoom in on the rat being rat being dangled by its um, tail um, to um, a young boy hanging off of um, a fence, throwing rats at these growing um, snakes. These at this point, like medium sized creatures, you see, we see a young Emmanuel, at, um, his family's um, home back in Malthoon. Um, he's in the middle, he has a bucket of mostly dead rats that he's been feeding um, to the this. Um, I don't know, what would you call a herd of snakes? But uh, this group of um, snakes that are still in training to be mounts for his family. Um, Emmanuel, you have just uh, managed to avoid another lecture from one of your instructor instructors after you were um, once again kind of ignoring some of their teachings as your uh, your mind kind of wandered away. Um, Apparently, the group term for snakes is bed, den, pit, or nest. But rattlesnakes can also be known as a Roomba of rattlesnakes. <laughs> oh, I was definitely going with myself. A Roomba. <laughs> I was about to jump. <laughs> well, all right, well, guys. If there's anything I, that's going to clear a room, it's a group of. And yeah, if you thought he was missing the lecture, here it comes. <laughs> also, I'm just going to say that if we ever form a band, we must absolutely be called Rattlesnake Roomba. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hard campaign. We'll do yep, it. Yep. Yep. As one day, one, one of these APs we're going to have to start as a full <laughs> band. Mm. Um, anyway. Oh, you, and, um, and to add to that, um, if it's a rescued a diseased looking rat, and as a result, a few dire rats came to their aid. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what we're going with. <clears throat> Speaking of our, uh, between some and monster. I, I think there's a... <laughs> right. Um, I think there's a few rounds left. I don't know if we're still counting it or not, if they're still around. Um, we'll get back to that in a moment. We're just doing a flashback stuff right now. Okay. Um, so, Emmanuel, um, you're as a child, you're just you're kind of just enjoying playing with these creatures as well as having your free time. Um, as, as a young Emmanuel, um, what is your personality and mindset? I can't imagine you're all um, same as you are now, but I'll leave this up to you to describe how you are. Uh, he's Rough and tumble, outdoor type, loves to be out there um, on the estate, you know, riding the stable of uh, practice snakes. One day he hopes he can ride on one of the large ones. Um, He loves practicing his archery and practicing his dueling technique with the dueling sword. He can't stand to be inside. He can't stand to sit still. Um hates listening to the lectures, hates trying to read, might not be very good at it in hindsight. Um, He doesn't really like doing any of the magic lessons that they try and teach him. Um, Very little holds. Yeah, so you're happy for the moments to reprieve. You have quite a bit of instructors and quite a bit of schooling that you probably don't feel too great about for most of it. Um... And as you're kind of feeding these snakes, um, one of the um, the hands for these stables, a young elven man, well, a man is kind of, it's weird with elf ages. He looks about the same age as you. This is around the time when you're about 12 or 13. Um, dark brown skin, black haired. He's wearing a um, vest that has a bunch of images of snakes, frogs, and llamas all over it. 
um, you've recognized him. He, he's one of the ones that kind of help you sneak away with your, um, and gallivant and play around in the, um, the yards when you, when you can. Um, he is known as Pico. Uh, and as, as you're feeding the snakes, he's like, you know, um, the snakes really prefer it. If you put a little bit of citrus on those rats, it makes it go down a little smoother as he kind of tosses you a lemon from this basket. He's holding citrus. Oh, a lemon. Okay. Huh. And so he sliced it open and stab his dagger back into the fence and then try and squeeze a little slice of lemon onto the rats in the basket. <laughs> yeah, as you do that, um, you see one of the snakes kind of go up and grab one of the, um, the rats and try to swallow in one hole and it's that kind of comical where the the snake kind of stops moving and kind of stares at you. Its mouth opens and the rat just kind of tumbles out of it as it like looks like if a snake could look at you with a dull expression is this what it would be doing. Fucking raw. <laughs> and um, the elven boy just immediately starts cackling. What? I should never like, listen to you, Pico. Everyone knows snakes don't like lemon on their rats. They like pepper. Uh, one one of these days you're going to stop following for my tricks and maybe one day I'll even get you to, you know, play a prank on somebody else. Please. No one could ever pull one over on Emmanuel. <laughs> he just uh, <laughs> chuckles again. Um, he's like, um, your father still have you um, going through every drill known to the, known to the city. Oh, Indeed. All the formations, all the changing times. I'm pretty sure running a city is just one of the easiest jobs there can be. I'd much rather be out adventuring, maybe on the front lines, maybe riding with the honor guard. He's like, well, there's other ways to serve your kingdom other than just any kind of points over your massive house other than being like... Um, your father. I mean, I mean, look at all the people that are trying to come go and bring all kinds of immigration to Molthone. I can't, I can't imagine, you know, that wouldn't be a good fit for you. I mean, you're so charismatic as he kind of, he does kind of a pose to kind of strike as he sees like the, 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 the viewer kind of sees um, similar poses that Emmanuel has struck as he announces himself. Please, I don't act like that. <laughs> no, I I don't think anybody would ever listen to me. I'm, I'm not that charismatic. I just like to be with the animals and shoot my bow. I don't know if I'd ever want to be a... Oh, what do they call them when they go around recruiting? Recruiter? I don't even know. Hmm. Yeah, some type of adventure. I guess. Um, anyway, and he kind of points to the house. Bethany is just making up a fresh batch of sweet cakes. I, I vote, you distract her, I break in, steal a bunch for us, and we go and venture out into the forest nearby. Got it. I'll tell her somebody put lemon juice on the rats and see if she has any more. She hates like, it when I bring the rats inside. And you both kind of nod as you uh, playfully run off towards the house and we come back to the, the new scene, uh, back to the um, the basement of this haunted manor. Um, very jarring transition. Um, as a fixer, yes, you do have maybe like another round, round maybe two, on your rats. Those rats remind me of home. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Well, um, you, you know what, Emmanuel? Me too. <laughs> there's there's lots of jokes I can make off of that. But I'm gonna give you this one and just let that that, that go. <laughs> so, kind of as a whimsical sort of thing, she's going to <laughs> just impulsively fling open this door and let the rest storm in. Okay. Just so many spikes shoot out. Just many tiny hey, bear, rats. Bear the rest than us. Mm-hmm. Then giant magic rats. What is this house doing? Nothing. All I gotta say about that flashback is, Pico, this guy's gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the the two rats, or I think three, I can't remember how many you got. Uh, my mind then immediately, but Pico's de Gaio. 
<laughs> yeah, that was what I was going for. Um, but yeah, they rush in. Um, you hear them batter around in there a couple seconds before they vanish. Nothing seems to happen or trigger anything. With that, you'll then pick our head around. Yeah, um, kind of start start from where you guys are again to kind of give you a sense of where you are. You're in what looks like to be a large old kitchen. Um, uh, oaken tables covered in rat droppings and moldy stains. Um, shelves line the wall. An, ov- an oversized fireplace is in the northeastern portion of this room. There's shelves on the southwest wall that are um, in a state of disarray. Um, with a bunch of cracks on the wall leading inside where the rats had scurried out. Um, and then as you fix as you look into this room... Um, you see two wine racks that line the walls. Their um, shelves largely empty and dusty, with uh, broken glass bottles and clutter on the floor. Just kind of getting the way she's been vibing this place. She's going to just kind of, you know, focus and see if she detects any any sort of evil presence in there, or if it's still just the ambient evil of the place um mostly just an ambient evil um you can roll a perception if you like in this room yeah. or um the room you're looking into however you guys want to do that let's do perception um in which room are you looking in this one i'm looking in um you don't really see much um you see that the most of the wine that has been in here has Spilled long ago. There doesn't seem to be remains of any kind of like um, liquid. So whatever had damaged them seems to have been long in the past. But other than that, you don't really get a sense of anything inside. Uh, no, and no evil other than the general ambient evil that's been in this whole place. Am what I about the rest to of roll a perception for uh, Yukai? See if yeah, the familiar knows anything. All right. I'll allow that. Nope, same as you. <laughs> same as me. All right. It flutters in, kind of shivers um, for a moment, and then flies back to you. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else hey. want to do anything? Uh, I'm going to check the door uh, your yes. traps. Checking the door for traps? Mm-hmm. Uh, roll that perception. Bam, so. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any kind of traps. Um, I'm going to roll an appraise, Richard. I am appraising these uh, glass shards on the floor. I'm appraising <laughs> their goblin value. <laughs> Worthless. Um, they're, they're clearly not um, rusted, and they're clearly not dull enough to really do a lot of damage other than just sharpness. Oh, rusted glass. And, and, they're, and, they're, not even, and they're not even shiny enough to be baubles. Hmm. <laughs> Have we looked in this door? Not yet. Not yet. Um, you, have, you haven't really um, scanned this room much either as you kind of got into a fight right away. All right. Um, I guess we can all look around this room and then we can go from there. Yeah. yeah, yeah anyone, anyone who wants to make perceptions in any rooms can. I'm not going to. How long will it take to do a take 10? A take 10, I believe, is like 10 minutes. If you're... I, I have a plus 14 with perceptions. I'm just going to do a normal perception for this room because Scylla's ready to move. Yep. 23. Um, but yeah, um, I did tell you that there's no traps on that door, right? Yeah, you did. Okay. This is for the um, Yeah. Let's see. So, Gogmer and Lucilla, as you're um, kind of surveying this room, um... Near the, um, the oven, near where Lucilla, you're standing... Um, on a um, cupboard next to it um, sits a very fine dinner set. Like it's very out of place considering where um, how dingy everything else looks. Mm-hmm. It's just a silver dinner set with um, about a dozen crystal decanters. Mm-hmm. Um, and while looking very valuable, um, both of you kind of look past it and you notice that there is a. Um, loose brick between there and the fireplace right where the chimney kind of is built into the the um, stone okay real question i am three feet tall can i reach that yes okay 
you like you have to kind of like stretch up and reach, but you're able to pull the brick out. And inside is a um, an urn. <laughs> The the thing I'm imagining right now, because Gogmert and Lucilla uh, both got the perception, I'm imagining like Lucilla getting up on Gogmert's shoulder to reach up for it, and then like Emmanuel or someone just walking by. <laughs> well, I I was just imagining uh, Richard describing the dinner the dinner set on a high shelf, and if he hadn't mentioned the brick, which was much more interesting. I was going to ask someone to get it. We were just going to have one of those film moments where then we cut to a wide shot and realize it's like half and a more my height away. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Earn, I bring that to the center table and go, okay, five silver pieces says I know what this is. Human remains? Most likely, yeah. Uh, didn't I read Not somewhere that... Not human remains. Uh, I, uh, I open up the lid. Roll me a... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> inside, um, you see... On the top, it looks a little weird. Like, why is this wooden and pointy? And you realize, uh, um, there's some dried pine cones inside of this urn. And you're like, what the hell? And you start pulling at them, and you're like, there's something shiny underneath them. And you pull out like about three of these dried pine cones. Underneath, there is a um, another. Th- there's three violet garnets um, inside of the um, urn. Mm. But that's all that you find in there. Looks pretty nice. Like these garnets look pretty nice. Uh, They're about on quality magic. with the um, decanter sets. Detect magic. No magic. Um, praise, yeah. Um, looking over at this whole thing, um, each of these garnets is worth about a hundred gold pieces each. Um, and the dinner set and decanters could be anywhere from eight hundred to a thousand gold worth of um, stuff. Well, like, I mean, it's less morbid, but I can't say I'm not kind of disappointed. <laughs> But you do remember this was a um, rich person's house before. Yeah. It came I know. I'm just saying that out loud. Adventure is so much more interesting than just wealth. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't give up hope. They may still be haunted. <laughs> Pauses as pocketing ca- decanters. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly <laughs> continues. <laughs> you have one of the decanters halfway into your bag. Kind of look at him. Your tongue kind of slithers out and licks your eye as you continue pushing it in. <laughs> I I look forward to in the future. I think I already picked the AP where I'm going to do it. Uh, playing Mickin again because I didn't realize when I first played him there is a feat to get cheek pouches as a rat folk. Is it Council of Thieves? <laughs> um, no, it was originally going to be um the Pharaoh's one because it's about looting tombs, which was yeah, very right. Mickin. But I I do like the idea of very much what Rish is doing about where everyone else is talking and is just kind of pocketing stuff. Except you see a big rat and he just takes the Voss and he just sticks it in his mouth. <laughs> um, uh, Mickey would also be good in Legacy of Fire because it says that like all kinds of um, weird races is congregate there. Mm-hmm. Sure, you're just a rat, for the future. not a hamster. <laughs> oh man, I, I think I, wanna, I actually want to try Genie Binder for Legacy of Fire. Uh, either way, back to the present. Yeah. Uh, well, but you, you do feel fairly confident that you found anything that's to be found in this kitchen. Uh, are those pine cones scented? Do you smell? Yes. Um. Yes, they are. They smell very faintly of old cinnamon. Ooh, reminds me of wintertime. Also, I saw a roof peeking his head in that room. <laughs> Perception roll sense. <laughs> well, but. I think that's everything, guys. I'm gonna go check out this door. Mm. While she's doing that, I'll search yeah. around in here. Seven roll perception. And that I'll go explode from open. touching the room. Okay, I'll get to yours after I open the door. 
<laughs> um, so Lucilla, as you open this door, uh-huh. um, you open it up and, um, excuse me. <clears throat> um, this room has two bunk beds that stand relatively in the, um, middle of the, um, southern end of this room. Uh-huh. <clears throat> They're relatively free of any kind of dust or mold. Um, and in between them, you see a overturned chair that lies between them. Uh, I want to throw the pine cone at the chair from where I'm standing. Gotcha. Um, going back to Reesh while um, she's flinging this pine cone. Um, yeah, you do actually find something as you're looking around. Um, as you're looking over, you see on the top of um, the western rack, you see a hinge built into the stone. Mm-hmm. And you go over there and you open up this little compartment in the back wall. And you see eight bottles of wine. Mm. Um, they're very dusty. And as you kind of wipe away one of the names off of one of them, um, it says the Gardi Vineyard. Mm. You could do either an appraise or I'll allow a knowledge, local or history, to determine the value of these. I'll go with appraise because that's a plus 10. Yeah. Um, you're not sure where you picked up on the information, but these are um, a famed vineyard from Ch- um, Cheliacs. Each of these eight bottles is worth about 100 gold pieces. Very fine wine, and considering how old they look, they've probably aged beautifully and either taste like vinegar or taste really nice. <laughs> Just say, uh, from what I know, you have to rotate them rather frequently but hey it's D D fantasy wine yeah. that's why i said it's kind of a toss <laughs> just the fact just the name alone though would fetch the price even if they didn't actually taste good inside just for uh, a placeholder to put on your wine cellar you're like i have this one mm-hmm. Rory, roll the dice see if you got the good wine or the bad wine <laughs> <laughs> um and then lucilla you throw your pine cone at this chair mm-hmm. go ahead and just make me a um, dexterity roll Shazam. It pings off the um, chair. The pine cone just breaks apart into a bunch of pieces. Otherwise, nothing seems to happen. They don't make pine cones like they used to anymore. They really no. don't. Uh, I'm going to shoot a perception into this room. Go for it. Roll attack. <laughs> uh, um, looking around the room, it looks like um, someone who's re- living here relatively recent compared to some of the other places like maybe in the past year otherwise nothing really stands out to you there does seem to be more fresh rat droppings than in, in certain areas that you've seen so far mm. but otherwise you don't see like skeletons or anything else is this a thing right over here um that is like a dresser i'm just gonna go look at that probably there's nothing but in character feels like what I would do. As that's going on, Fix would kind of press your ear against... Is this a door down here? It looks like it's a door. Yes, it is. Uh, press your ear against it and see if she could hear anything on the other side. Yeah, roll perception. Um, don't hear anything. Um, just another wooden door. Um, Lucilla, as you're looking through the dresser, it looks to have what looks to be commoner's clothes. Mm-hmm. Nothing fancy or elaborate. Um, Looked like this was probably like a room that maybe people who are working on the mansion to repair it might have been living. Because you did remember talking to um, Aldern back when the campaign started that he was talking about rebuilding his family home. Right. Okay. I guess the only thing I'll do, just because seems like the more of a tail thing to do is uh, I'm going to look up directly above where this chair is overturned. Uh, you don't see anything. Okay. Didn't think so. It was worth an ask. With this one fixed, not seeing, hearing anything on the other side, we'll just go ahead and open the door. You open it up and it goes down into a long hallway. Mm-hmm. Um, looking so- down into it, this, this just... Un- Un, um, un, the the sense of dread you've had through across this entire building ha- is like magnified. 
Um, like to the point where um, your bird, um, I can never remember his name, um, Yukai, um, instinctively flies back, um, and like flies away from the corner before kind of reassuring itself and flying back to you. But it's still like it had all its like bird feathers in a hackle, like mm. kind of like goosebumps on a bird. Yeah, just puffed up. Yep. Fixed would kind of look at you guys reaction, just slowly close the door and say, I think this is the way we'll ultimately go. Let's clear out the other rooms first. That being said, rolling a perception on this door. Um roll a perception. Just a second. Um, you can safely assure yourself that there are no traps. There's nothing behind it that at least that you can hear. And it is a relatively mundane old wooden door. Is it locked? It is not. I open it up. Okay. Opening up, um, you open it up to what was once a pantry. Um, the room is filthy and reeks of what must have been the layer of hundreds, if not thousands, of rats. Swaths of fur cling to everything, and mounds of rat, drapping, rat droppings cover the entire floor. Hmm. I might have to change my answer now, Richard. Hmm. <laughs> you don't care about the were rats anymore? <laughs> the shit changed me. Wand, don't go in there. You see him just spit out a rat as he walks by. <laughs> so yeah, you can um, safely assume um, Gogman as you're looking in. It is clearly what was once a pantry, but is just completely destroyed by what was the nest of the all these rats that had scurried out from the walls. Um, I did forget to reveal one thing. Um, the room. It was not, sorry, I had misread it. Um, it wasn't a hinge in terms of um, a hidden compartment. In the room that had the wine, it was actually a whole hidden room that had those bottles of wine in a separate Thing. It's not big. It doesn't really change much. It just I didn't reveal it before. Yeah, more hinges. <laughs> yeah, it was just like a, it was like a big door hinge that opened up into this hidden wall. The plot hinges on that detail. Oh yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no applause. Just throw money. <laughs> I accept rolls of quarters. The bruises are payment enough. <laughs> are we heading down the hallway now? Is that the plan? I yep. think so. All right. Taking my animal companions. Opening it back up. Move us all together. Um, by Did the you? way, Emmanuel, how long did that shrinking of Juan last? Um, good question. I think it's um, hours. Yeah, I think it's hours. Yeah. Awful. If it's hours, you guys haven't even been here a full hour yet. Yeah. Well, it's probably been at least one hour now after the, all the searches and yeah, a couple people taking tens and such. Five hours. Yeah, so you're fine. Magic Fang is probably worn off by now. Yeah. So yeah, anything that, anything that was minutes per level are gone now, but hours per level is different. Let me see if, how long does Shillelagh last. Um, if actually looking around that corner, you see what looks to be a large iron door. Uh, definitely an imposing door around the corner. Anyone want to check it out, or should I just barrel through? I'll, uh, I'll give it a look-see real quick. Excuse me. Sliding past you here. And I'll give it a perception. 29. Um, this is a Despite the fact that it is, there's patches of rust that mar its face, it is a very stout, thick wooden, uh, thick iron door. Um, it doesn't look to be trapped of any kind, but it is. It looks exceptionally made, and um, 
the locking mechanism is not the normal like um, few tumbler ones you're used to. This one looks to be rather complicated. Like you know those locks that like were really weird, these special design that have tumblers on top and bottom. Mm-hmm. Kind of that kind of situation. Right. So looking still... at it, you know that it is going to be exceedingly hard to pick. Um, and, and just I... FYI, if you fail by a certain amount, it will break the pick. Okay, I do have a question though. Uh, is it still connecting into the wall at one point, like where the the pins are going into the wall? Um, not from this side. Okay. It looks I'm like sorry. it was designed to prevent entry from the outside really well. Okay, I was just wondering if acid could, uh, because that's one of the uses for acid is just melting locks and popping it open. <laughs> I mean, you could try that, but it looks like a, a generic like acid splash or regular bottles of acid would take quite a long time and quite a bit of it to really get through it. Okay, let me see here. Like, looking at it with that perception, this lock, this door was and lock were designed to keep people out with as hard as as best as possible, really. If it looks like anybody's going to lockpick at you, Kai, well, go ahead and slap a guidance on them. Okie doke. Um, why... It always feels weird that um, disabled device gets armor check penalty. <laughs> well, I guess the armor kind of can conf- like if you like gauntlets, gloves. Yep. You can easily yeah. say that you take that off and get rid of the armor check penalty, but yeah. if, like you open the door and then you might have like a minus one to your AC if you did that, for instance. Yep. I mean, it's only it's only a plus one difference for me anyway. I have a plus nine disabled device. I don't know what you have. Ten. And um, a plus two additional for these tools. So it would be a plus 12 total. Plus one from you, okay? Mm-hmm. All right, so I'll, I'll, gi- I'll give it a shot. And shabam. Hey, 29 total. Yeah. Um, pretty good. Um, good news is they don't break, but um, you maybe get two or three tumblers before you just make the slightest um, shift and the entire lock resets. Is that a 29 or a 30? Because, again, Yukai has plus one to oh, that. Oh, right. It's a 30, then. Um, still the same thing. Well, damn. Good It Lord. is a very fine lock. Some would say a superior quality lock. Mm. Which no. I'll, just, I'll let you know. It is, it, it is a DC of 40 to get through this lock. Uh, Gogmark doesn't have any lockpicks of his own, Lucilla, but I have mending if I break them, if you want to let me take a shot. So, we're off to find the boss key, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you get, even if you get a natural 20, it doesn't automatically succeed, so you're probably... Uh, unless you uh, have a way to really boost Lucilla's... Yeah. Wait, did we find a key? Um, you found the key that let you into the manor? Yeah, uh, we, we haven't cleared out the second floor, and I'm saying this out loud in character. Okay. Or maybe in our silent, uh, in our shared thought, thought speech instead. <laughs> Except for Emmanuel doesn't hear it. Yeah, basically. Guys, just, guys, don't pull, you remember that key we found? I, I pull right. my lock yeah. fixed out and I just turn around and I just give a slow head shake of no, and Quick. that conveys everything. <laughs> Quickly, go super bag ends is. Fix will just kind of do a you know a half frown and kind of look up and seem to convey. Yeah, we should probably check the second floor. It seems like there could be something up there. Mm-hmm. Everything okay, y'all? Need to try, try that other key. What key? No. Where's everybody going? To find the other key. Wait, you you? Oh, the key into the house. Yeah. Right, give that a shot. Down that way. <laughs> Fix was too close. I'm just standing yeah. right here. Emmanuel, when you go try the key, it doesn't even fit into the hole. It's nope. entirely the wrong shape. Not this one. <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and move you back onto the first floor. Always gonna clear the first floor. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys cleared this floor mostly. Yeah. yeah uh, there was a second that so the other stairs went up. Yeah. Um, Two different upstairs, actually. Yeah, you have two different ways to go upstairs. You have the one in the the main entry hall, and you have the other one. <laughs> yeah, the everyone hall. else is jumping off this bridge, I might as well too. 
listen, if we want to be safe, we would pick a safer nature to just live in, and this would be Animal Crossing, the TTRPG. If there's anybody that's going to jump off a bridge, it's going to be a paladin. You're going up that stair, right? Yeah. Okay. Give me one second, I'll switch, switch you guys over. Safety is for normies. Should we split up into two different groups and go up the other stairs, too? Only no. if we set an elaborate <laughs> trap. Um, so, which, how's the path going, since it'll have to be single file? I'm right behind Fix. Yeah, Fix will go first. Okie dokie. I guess I'll be in the middle, and the pets should probably be in the back. Yeah, I'll bring the, the pets up later, because it's going to take a little bit to fit them in. This. <laughs> uh, and you can... You can, if I can move, you want to go in front of me, but you're the wizard, so I assume. So you guys with the most yep, points here. in the group. Looks like we switched places, anyways. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, I was I was trying to fit you guys in here. I had to reset the fog and everything. No, nah, that's okay. Gogmer just crawls under your legs and pushes you forward. <laughs> yep. So right now you're in like a, a large empty hallway. Um, you see doors going every which way. A fix up from here. You can see one here here and here as well as here and here there's one down south here and there's also a door to the left of reach all right there's a door there. and we open up at the same time right that's how this Sounds works <laughs> well, apparently you can go right through that door huh rich yeah, apparently i think it's because it's angled but yeah it's fine probably i'm guessing it's just yep I found the other stairs. Logic would dictate that this door wouldn't have a trap, so I'm going to try to open it. <laughs> okay. She'll put her ear against this door and see if she could hear anything. Go ahead and roll me a perception while Lucille just slams open that one. I do it slowly. I don't <laughs> slam it open. <laughs> I know. I'm just talking shit. Uh, but yeah, you don't hear anything if that's your perception of 15. Okay. Yep. And then she'll... Open it and then <laughs> just kick um, it open while insulting the ghost mothers in every known language. Yeah, so as you open this room, a um, you see a large fireplace in the northwestern portion of the chamber, and you see paintings that hang along the walls to the north and south, each covered with a thick sheet of dusty cobwebs that obscure any subjects that might be in these paintings from view. Oh, it's the dandy room. And you do see a door on the other side. No telling how old those paintings are. Um, Ethics, are you able to see into that room where you're standing? I do have dark vision. Well, I mean, like, can you see through the like the door that's shut? Oh, uh, I could see up to the square. Okay. No, I meant, like, you can't see um, this way, right? No. Okay. Because um, I was only asking because Reese could see through the other one. Yeah. So. No, this Just is be one careful. I can't see. Everyone just be careful at the diagonal doors because if you step on them, you can see through yeah. into them. Sometimes yeah, I it blocked you. the other direction on my view, but yeah, yeah. So anyway, I continue. Can, I, yeah, yeah. Um, Isn't there a setting? Or yeah, it's bad because what, there's a setting where you can't move past the walls, the mm -hmm. dynamic lighting walls, but then it makes it hard to move them around the map when you need to. So fix it open this door and see what's inside. Give me was give me. I have, I have to actually do something um, um, mechanic wise on my end. So give me one second. Roll for initiative. <laughs> yeah, probably a good idea. It's eight o'clock. Um, yeah, I might as well bio right. Uh, like there, <laughs> there's something I forgot to do at the start of the session that I'm supposed to do, <laughs> and I forgot to do it. So sorry. Who said you were gonna get a fight back? <laughs> Fix hit the load screen. Yeah, I'll, uh, when it, when it's all over and done with what I'm planning here, I'll let you guys know. It's not anything too big of a deal. It's just mechanically, some stuff doesn't make sense if I don't figure it out. <laughs> so between sleeping entirely too much, I've been playing a little bit of Monster Hunter Rise. So it's like everybody else. Yes, he's brand new. 
Yeah. I, I, I've been playing that gotcha game, um, Genshin Impact. Mm. Which actually is pretty fun. What I miss? Uh, I was just talking about how I've been playing that game called Genshin Impact. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a free game, and they actually do a surprisingly good job of you can play it completely without having to pay for anything, and it's still fun. Yeah, games like that do exist out there. There are those that don't abuse the free-to-play model. Yeah, it basically kind of plays like a very cheapened version of like Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Like where you have gliding mechanics, you have stamina to climb and glide and all this other stuff. Um, and you get characters that you unlock through what they're called primo gems. So they're basically just like a, a loot system rolling kind of like loot boxes. But um, you get so much of the stuff to um, to roll for them that um, really only pay, paying for it's only really if you want to be impatient. Mm-hmm. You can completely enjoy the game without having to get any of the high tier characters or anything like that nonsense. So when everyone's back, I'm ready to go. Sorry about that. No worries. Here, I'm good. I don't know who else is gone. I think right. Loki's still gone. All right. Anyone else check out the uh, pre gems I made up for Call of Cthulhu? I haven't yet. I, had, I think I forgot to join the game. Oh, I'll do that. I'll do that after we're done playing tonight. Yeah, I can send the. I can pop the link back in there later tonight. Yeah. I'm back. <sighs> okay, I think everyone's back now, unless Cope's not here. Cope, I think he's just gone. Yeah, I think he's still gone. <coughs> so yeah, my my week was going pretty good until today. Yeah, I was actually on on like pace to like okay i'm gonna get this done i was getting these chores done i had planned on doing some stuff in my free time mm-hmm. and then i went out to go shopping for shoes today and that's gonna happen so i'm pissed yeah. was elsewhere during that conversation but i had one to interject that i i actually like to drive but everyone else on the road makes me paranoid yeah, like driving itself is fine. I enjoy driving if it was just empty road. But there are so many stupid people. Like on the highway, the like mm-hmm. I, what I hate most on the highway is when you're on the right lane and people are trying to get on the highway, which is fine. But you need to either commit to going slower than me or going faster than me, and I'll adjust to you. <laughs> but when you match my speed and you're trying to merge into the lane I'm in, I'm like, oh my god, do something. <laughs> craziest one i've seen recently was uh was on the highway and this guy comes barreling past on the shoulder cuts across the off ramp and then goes under the overpass cuts across the on ramp over there and i lose sight of him as he cuts in front of a truck hauling tractor tires considering nothing in front of me came to a screeching halt i'm assuming he survived but i'm not sure if that's for good or ill yeah wow I, I've, oh, I've run across stupid people like that before, too. There was just this horrifying crash of videotapes in Houston where it was just taken from the perspective of the people in this pileup, and it's just every couple seconds, bang, bang, bang. You don't know if you're going to fucking die or not. Mm-hmm. Drive that way on the fucking highway. Oh, my God. Um, so yeah, Fixa, when you open this room, by the way, I think we're all back now. Huh? Um, the, this is a, this bedroom is entirely caked in a thick, spongy layer of dark green, blue, and black molds. Hmm. Looks like Fix picked a winner. <laughs> She's gonna instinctually hold her breath and just kind of take a look around. Um, looking around, you don't spot anything. It's a little hard to see anything as all this like mo- like mold is growing over everything, but it just looks like a bedroom. Like an old, old, disgusting bedroom. Right. Well, after that passes through, she's going to close the door behind her and breathe in a fresh air and say, don't go in there unless you want to catch something. Not <laughs> mold. Colorful, but not healthy looking. I think I found the portrait room over here. I'm going to perception to make sure nothing's going to immediately murder me before I step in. As is tradition. 27. Um, doesn't look like there's anything murdery about 
more than just the house in general. Step in. You're fine so far. All right. Um, guess I'll just start taking a look around. Just the ambient level of murder. <laughs> uh, yeah. Rolling over that perception. It looks like this was like some kind of um, galley. Or gallery, not galley. <laughs> it could be both. <laughs> now I just imagine a mansion, but the entire top floor is just a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Welcome to Skulls and Shackles, bitches. I tried to leave the pirate life, but the pirate life couldn't leave me. <laughs> Our therapist calls it an abusive relationship. <laughs> and a baker next door calls it that, too. <laughs> but yeah, I'm rolling over that perception. You just It looks the same as when you first peered into it, an old fireplace bunch of um, dusty and old paintings you can't really see any features of at the moment. Uh, let me see. Um, Are these the paintings? Oh, I actually yeah. don't have press to digitation, so I can't just magically clean it. And they, I will say they are too high for Lucilla to reach. Uh, can I just... Is it just cobwebs, or is it also dust? It's cobwebs and dust. Okay, so never mind. I'll just go look at the fireplace. Oh, if no one else is going to clean them off, I will. I'm okay. curious who they are. If you bring it up, I would be able to press the edge on them. Uh, these paintings are probably worth something, Reesh. Mm -hmm. Check them out and see who they are. They're probably the people who own man. You know, um, the ones that murdered or killed themselves. Looking Old at paintings. the, um, as you're cleaning off the um, paintings to the south, Emmanuel and Reich, mm -hmm. um, you see five paintings. Um, one is a tall, thin, narrow faced man with a um, thin mustache. Um, there is a young woman with long red hair and an impish smile. Um, two little girls. Um, and a little boy that looks vaguely like Aldern as a child. Like the paintings are all remarkably done by some artist who knew the fuck what he was doing. So you can definitely see facial features and everything. Mm. And then there's just the three up here. He's probably not worth anything to anyone but Dean. Um, and then Lucilla looking at the uh, fireplace. You don't see anything out of the ordinary. Drat. Yeah, the only thing you haven't looked in this room that you can see is the paintings up here as well. Yeah, so that's it. Maybe check next room. I don't think these worth anything. Oh. Meanwhile, Manuel goes right to him. I want to see what's under <laughs> Yeah, Fix was about to just start Could be a clue. peeking behind them each in turn. Um, anyway, Fix, so you're starting to peer behind the paintings. Emmanuel, you're cleaning off these ones. Um, there's three paintings here to the north. Um, another tall, middle-aged man with long, dark hair, clean-shaven face, with dark blue noble's clothes. A stern-faced brunette woman with wisps of gray hair and her short hair and a flowing blue dress. And another young girl. As you clear these um, paintings, um, you all kind of notice the temperature begin to drop. And it drops dramatically. Damn. Uh, Reach as you go over there, you actually see the breath of your um, the breath leave your mouth as it kind of frosts in the air, um, and you see rhymes of um, fingers of rhyme kind of slither across the walls. The pictures depicted in these portraits suddenly shift from living to dead. You know um, the two older women slump into misshapen, tumor-ridden corpses. Um, the man to the the south grows a, a pale, long cut across his throat, and blood washes down over his chest. Uh, another woman, the other woman, um, blackens and chars, her arms, legs, and back twisted as if broken in dozens of pa places. Um, Alder and his childlike um, portrait, the flesh darkens with rot, his hair falls out, and he deforms into a ghoul-like monster. Um, 
the two young girls um, in the South portraits actually fro- the portraits frost over, but otherwise remain unchanged. Um, the um, portrait of the man to, I believe it was the South. No, this is the man to the North. Um, his entire portrait frame and all erupts into a sudden explosion of fungus and tumorous growth. This wave of fungus and disease washes over this entire room. Um, I need everyone to make me a fortitude save. That was a two. Oh, I'm so concerned by how good my rolls are so far. <laughs> <sighs> I'd like to imagine I'm like looking for a secret thing up the chimney of the fireplace. So when it all washes over the room... When it's done, I just pull my head out of the chimney where it wasn't in the line of fire. We said two uh, tap rerolls again. Or is it just burning? Yeah, you have, you have two. Right, don't, mind, don't mind the animals. I just kind of put them there. For a I'm a reroll for this as well. That's, yeah. that's a mildly more comfortable number. Okay, so Mine's- Emmanuel's 22, four, 17, and 17 for Reese and Gogmer. Who sells 23? FX is 19. So you're all fine. Um, and as soon as this wave of fungus and disease washes all over you, it is gone in a flash. <laughs> the room begins to return to normal um, temperature. Um, the tiny splotches of mold that kind of drop onto the um, ground, kind of like evaporate and vanish. <laughs> I, uh, I pull my head out of the chimney. And I will say you all are very lucky. So what was that? Rish grabs a little car- wood carving of a lizard that's her holy symbol and starts muttering prayers to uh, Tenshirecha. Uh, ancestors in this place, not happy. Maybe, maybe burn, yes. And we're done. I'm still thinking that's a good idea. Looks like you guys are all coming around to my way of thinking. Hey, I, I said it was a solid plan B when you brought it up the first time. Like, I, I wasn't taking that off the table. I won't hurt things in the basement where we're trying to go, but still, I'm, I'm up for it after the fact. <sighs> Too many rooms in this place. Although I don't know if we can get out the way we came in. All those birds... I'm sure we'll figure it out. Pop open this door and keep going. So you're going over, you're opening that door now? Apparently. Okay. Oh, there's a door in there? Oops. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you open this door, um, the furniture in this bedroom, while <laughs> dusty and unkempt, does not exhibit any si- major signs of mold damage or any water damage. Um, the one exception is there seems to be a dark stain near the northern window over, like, re- if it's the only one that can see it, it's about right here. Mm. Hmm. Just step in. It looks like a nice, um, like a nice, um, high quality bedroom for nobles of some sort. You said there was a crystal up here? Um, no, there's a stain on the window there. Oh. Is there anything she can roll to kind of discern the nature of the stain? Roll the CP. I can help out with anything as well. Mm-hmm. Um, roll a perception or a yeah, no, a perception or fuck, um, engineering. It's a weird one, but yeah. I'll hit uh, up that engineering. Twenty one. Not like um, how clean this place look compared to the rest. So looking at it, um, Lucilla, you kind of noticed that um, the the stains seem to be like part of the window, mm-hmm. um, but it doesn't seem like it should it should be part of the window. Like the glass, the way it was made, shouldn't have had this weird blotch in it. I think that you noticed that the blotch um, resembles. A co- the color of old dried blood, but it's somehow inside the glass of the window. Maybe it's always, leave. It's always a good sign when the house is bleeding internally. 
much rather it bleed internally than us seeing blood pouring down the walls. Yeah. Um, looking around the room, the only yeah, the only thing that really stands out to you is um, that, and then the um, there's a a bed, some old dressers, and what looks like a small fireplace, and an old desk that looks like it has some dried blood on it as well. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, perception the desk real quick. Um, yeah, roll perception. I mean, if we're looking for a key, where would you keep? The key? No. Yeah, um, it just looks like there was a someone spilled a lot of blood on this desk at one point. I'll oh, shoot. I'm gonna open up one of the drawers. Um, nothing. Um, some dust, but it doesn't. It seems like anything that was in these drawers was taken out a long time ago. Ah, oh, drat. Well, the fix will go ahead and do a sweep of this place, detect an evil, see if there's any high points of evil, or if it's just the general ambient. Go ahead and with that, go ahead and roll me a perception. Um, as you're like scanning the room, you detect some evil on the desk. Um, looking at it, you notice that what looks to be looks like there's a dagger on the top of the desk that wasn't there before, and as you kind of like do a double take, it's gone. Uh, it's an actual spooky thing. For a second there, I thought you better make a joke how it wasn't at my eye level, so I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Fix to go to the desk and kind of touch for it if she saw the dagger. See if it's actually there and just invisible or something. Nothing there. Careful, you might get whammied. <laughs> What's it calls? Uh, I'm sure we can find this key. Manuel's going to go over here and open up the side table. Um, yeah. Um, looking through this room, as you look over, open the side tables, the dressers, it's all been cleaned out relatively, other than the bed that's in there, as well as like the furniture. Um, any clothes that, like, this is been completely cleaned out. Like, the rest of the rooms you see, you've seen some old uh, materials, old clothes. This one has just been emptied. Check it, uh, turn down the bed. Eh, meanwhile, in a hurry to get through this place, I'll open mattress. this door over here. Just, Sorry, what was that? So meanwhile, in an attempt to hurry us through this place, I'm going to open yes. this door over here. Sorry, I was talking to family. They do that occasionally. It's very annoying. <laughs> the trick words. Is, is to just go halfway across a continent. <laughs> Um, so as you open this room, this, um, room has two padded chairs and a long couch facing a wide alcove lined with stained glass windows. These windows depict a diverse array of animals and plants from north to south, um, are a large pale and ghostly scorpion, a gaunt man holding out his arms as a dozen bats hang from him, a moth with a strange skull-like pattern on its wings a tangle of dull green plants with bell-shaped flowers, and a young maiden sitting astride a well in a forest while a spi- spindly spider the size of a dog descends along a string of webbing above her. Hmm. Okay, so either these are new, or this family was just always evil, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> so out loud. Because I don't trust people who keep art like that inside their house. <laughs> You can roll an Arcana trick if you wish. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that a shot too. Woo! Well, no, Lucille, this is a little. This makes sense. It's a little outside of your wheelhouse. You're not like a practice practitioner, and it doesn't seem like something she would have been researching. Yeah. Um, checking these windows, all are classic spell components for necromancy magic: scorpion venom, vampire's breath. The tongues of Deathwing moths, Belladonna, the heart of a maiden slain by poison. Um, in addition, you notice um, with that big of a role, um, those spell components are recognized as all having ties to several known lich um, formula. Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the unknown, little known curse of being a vampire is a bunch of necromancers following you around with open jars. <laughs> 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 I mean, it makes sense why you helped me become a lich in the way of the Wicked game. I needed your breath. 
you just kick open your front door. And there's just a bunch of pale black robed guys with open jars. So you're like, you get out of here. <laughs> you just pull out a broom and you start swinging it around. <laughs> <laughs> Not to know a full picture, but um, he's seen some legends about maybe be useful for lichdom. Live forever type are thinking, thing. Are we thinking that uh, someone tried it and just landed short? Maybe got ghoul? Maybe. Not the really thing for us. When we die, we join ancestors in great horde. <sighs> when I was checking the bedroom back there, I could swore I saw a dagger on the desk briefly. Um... He's much murder go around here, yes. Could be more of ghost. Mm. Uh, uh, ghost Whatever you called it. it are, th- are these worse or better than what we've been fighting? Mm, worse? Generally yes. worse, yeah. Anybody that's magically attuned, would you be able to take a sweep in that area? <sighs> okay, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Uh, hit it with a check magic. The desk? The desk area, yeah. Um, you do not detect magic. Yeah, it's clean. I think a ghost was just fucking with you. Ghost daggers. <laughs> Neat. Okay. You see, w- when a rogue really is pissed off at whoever kills him, <laughs> he leaves ghost daggers behind. <laughs> well... If it's any consolation, if there was a lich involved, I'm pretty sure, certain there probably wouldn't be a sand point anymore. So, mm. depends. They say they're more interested in long-term things, but uh, more doors. Yes, eh, they say a lot. Yeah, let's find him and see what he likes. <laughs> He's many people say many things. He's very confusing. So we got uh, at least a door there, a door there. Well, I know we've seen that door. This door, that door, and probably more doors down there, which we can't just simply walk into. Um, Yeah, so um, I think so opened this door and looked in there. She saw a bunch of mold. There's a door here that you haven't opened, a door here. There's a door this way. And is there's that, a door to the south of Lawn. Is that um anything on the floor? Is that just the artist of the map being created? just the artist of the map? Gotcha. I'll it's supposed go. to be it's supposed to be the general mold and yeah. dust and stuff that's accumulated. I'll uh, perception this door. Well perception. That's my third natural one in a row. <laughs> Yeah, you were wondering about your rolls before. Yep, yep. Yeah, I was gonna hey, say you called it. At least it's not a, an attack roll or something, so I'm not gonna use the uh, reroll on it. Um, yeah, you don't detect anything, obviously. All right, I'm gonna slowly swing the door open. One second. Ooh, what uh, is this? Herps. Um. This once fine chamber has been completely destroyed. The bed is smashed. The mattress torn apart. Walls gouged as if by knives. Chairs hacked apart and paintings of the wall. The walls torn to pieces. With one exception. A portrait hanging on the northwest wall seems to be untouched, though it is hung backwards. And it seems the unseen object is facing the wall. Mm. I, I, I turned to Rish behind me. I've heard of night terrors, but this is ridiculous. Mm. Yeah, I think, it's... I think we had enough problems with painting today already. Yeah, um, I suspect your something bad will happen if you turn that painting around to face you. Absolutely. Does anyone know Mage Hand? Mm. Let me see if I can do anything. That's your yes, I do, but I don't want to do it. Grown rich. <laughs> I've been spending That's enough it. time with you. I know. A <laughs> uh, bonded mind turns against her. I also don't have it uh, memorized today. 
That is a useful spell, but uh, if I disrupt undead would come in more handy. Uh, maybe I just seep this room with a tech magic real quick. Yeah. Any magic? No magic. Yay. All right. I'll be the brave one. Since everyone's cowering at the doorframe, I will step into the room. <laughs> mm, nothing. You step on a couple of um, broken pieces of um, wood from the bed frame, but and it makes a kind of crunch underneath you, but otherwise, nothing really out of the ordinary other than everything. Fix would go towards the backwards painting and kind of look at it like, I'm going to go for it. Right. She would give them a chance to stay or leave and then flip it. Okay. Um, as you um, grab the portrait and you flip it around, um, I'll show you um, what it is as um, I'm not going to hide the name of it because I forgot to uh, Photoshop it out. Mm-hmm. We'll just say that there's a, a, a plaque on the bottom that says the name mm-hmm. Ayesha Foxglove. Mm-hmm. Um, is that the one that I saw get murdered, or was that someone else? Yes, it is. Gotcha. Um, as you're looking at this portrait, um, um, you all kind of get a sudden um, wave of fear. Except for one of you, Lucilla. You experience a um, wave of wait, no, maybe not you. Hold on. I <laughs> uh, no, a fixer. You you feel a wave of sadness come over you, while the rest of you experience a bunch of fear overcome you. Um, I'm immune to fear at this point, but sadness yeah, but you so feel it. it. It doesn't affect you. It's just you feel it. Um, and um. Uh, Lucilla, you um, begin to feel um, dizzy a little bit. You begin to stagger a moment. Um, you um, it, it takes a moment, but it does begin to um, pass. But for some reason, you have um, this overwhelming hatred of women. I need you to roll me a will save. Okay. I know it is ironic that the woman is the one that gets afflicted by this. Mm-hmm. 29, uh, 28. Um, you are two against fear. Yeah. Um, you had this un- unnatural... Like you had to attack um, Afixa for some reason. You don't know why you just had to attack her, but you're you you know from exploring through here that this is just something playing tricks with your mind, mm-hmm. and you kind of just shake your head and wipe and wipe it away. Um, you definitely get the sense that this is connected to the woman you had saw um, in your vision of her being murdered before from the room downstairs. <laughs> um, and as as you notice that, you kind of. Also, kind of noticed that the crying since you've been upstairs has gotten a little louder. Oh yeah, I totally forgot that that was the thing. I say out loud as a character. <laughs> I imagine that's a thing that people do anyway. If you hear crying long it's enough, still, yeah, just and it's faint up. enough, it just kind of becomes ambient noise. Yeah, I've I've worked an office job. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, the general uh, stench of human misery just becomes background noise. The so, no keys. That was that's uh that's the lady who I saw got murdered. Does she have a key with her? <laughs> that seemed like. Nope. Is one two more doors on this floor? Um, mm-hmm. three more. There's, yeah, that's the one one there's one here. There's one next to Gogmer, and there's one down south. Hey, you, you doing all right, Fixa? Yeah, yeah, just a lot of misery in this place. Yeah, 
That portrait was trying to mess with my head. It wanted me to stab you. Wait, what? <laughs> Don't worry. I just took that idea and put it in my compost bin. I assume, Michael, you want to open that door? I saw you moving around and pointing. Yeah. Uh, just a quick perception for traps and then open the door. Uh, yeah, there uh, doesn't seem to be any kind of traps. Um, as you open the door, it reveals a stairway going up. Mm. Uh, we got stairs up. over here. Do you want to wait to go up? Uh, we got another two rooms here first. Yeah, All let's right. take this one first, and Emmanuel will open it. Okay. Yeah, then, because I wouldn't be able to get there fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so oh, as you open this room, um, an iron tub sits in the middle of this room and you see the floor kind of, um, sagging around the tub's weight. Nope. Danger room. He shuts the door back. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is a danger house. What makes that danger room particularly dangerous? Uh, their wash tub looked like it was about to go through the floor. I wouldn't trust the floor in there. But you look pretty light, so you might be able to make it. I thought he was about to compliment a fixer. But you look pretty, so you're fine. <laughs> Fix would peek in the door. Okay. Sorry, right, just reset that down there. Bye. <laughs> um, yeah, looking in, you see the same the uh, manual saw. This large iron tub just kind of sags. Um, underneath it, um, the floorboards um, warp from what looks like mold and uh, damp um, wear and tear. And the eternal foe, gravity. Yes. Gravity is a myth. The Earth just sucks. <laughs> I don't know if it's just a feeling of spite for this place, but I want to kind of see that tub go through the floor. <laughs> Bet there's something in that tub. There's something in that tub? <laughs> that there's something in that tub. <laughs> God went looks in the tub. Um, I mean, you run, you run, and you peek up. You look up into the tub and look in, and there is nothing in the tub. It's just rusted on the bottom. Looks like um, water had like dried and like left that like hard water around the rims of it, but otherwise nothing. Mm, I look around the rest. Anything else look in- interesting in here? It just looks like an old washroom. So, so, no. so something uh, Gogmert probably doesn't understand or used to from his normal goblin household. It's some kind of kitchen. <laughs> Speaking of, this brings up a question. Like, I wonder how back in before you know there was plumbing and stuff, mm-hmm. how getting water out of an upstairs bathtub worked. That's got to be a ch- tedious as fuck. So you would have the servants come up with buckets and literally drain your filth water out for you. Yeah, that had to be the only way. That seems like... That seems so tedious. Mm-hmm. How about this toilet? I think they here? boil their food in here. <laughs> it's a big soup pot. <laughs> not, I mean, I have heard of old bathtubs being used for that. Wait a that. second. <laughs> I mean, we could sit it up and make a pretty good hillbilly hot tub. No, he's so no- naive. That's where you just fill it up with water and you put it over a campfire on a spit. <laughs> you see, you can, you can even heat it while you're in it if you're a wizard and just use control flames or something mm-hmm. and just put out the fire when it's heat hot enough. I mean, I've you know, always nice. wanted to do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> you want to boil yourself a lot of coke? Be awesome. Just have a little fire going. Should I roll a perception or is there nothing in here? Um, roll a perception. You are positive there is nothing in here worth anything. <laughs> Not even a pig to boil. Uh, oh, yeah, the only other room is the one down to the south. At least I'm uh, going to just look into this mold-filled room. Not stepping in, just looking in. And I'm going to start looking to see if I have anything valuable in my bag. They're all doing that. Oh, not that. Oh. You went through the wall. Yeah, I did. Yeah, some of, some of the walls, because they're at angles, don't work 100%. Mm. 
Gotcha. Yeah, if you need to and you're standing in front of a door, just click Alt to unalign yourself from the grid. I don't know. I like being on the grid. All right, let's bang this door down and get out of here. All right. Safety perception. None of them have been trapped so far, but... You never know. That's the one you don't check. I learned that the hard way with Fergus. Mm-hmm. Really? The one room I didn't check for traps, and there was a bunch of blades that came from the ceiling and practically killed me in that witch's uh, well, looks like thing. Looks like it doesn't matter anyways. I kicked that sucker open. <laughs> Not actually, though, because I would have to roll a strength check. <laughs> I talk a big game. And that might be embarrassing. <laughs> Turn the knob, then kick it. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. He, tar- he, he, he reaches up, and kind of like a cat or a, or a dog. Have you ever had a cat or a dog that learns to open a door? Mm. I've seen yes. it plenty, yeah. They jump uh, up. And <laughs> so, um, words, I'm trying to say. Um, this bedroom features a child-sized bed and a chair next to a toy box. There's a looming stone fireplace big enough for a child to get lost in um, to the um, east. Nope. Nope. Uh, where the, uh, yeah, let's, uh, to the east. I guess I'll step further into the room just to see the whole thing. Oh, there it is. This thing yeah. over here, right? That's, that's the bed. The fireplace is right here. Oh, okay. Fireplace is right here. Gotcha. Well, I don't think the key's going to be in the kid's bedroom. But I do expect there could be a creepy little child ghost. And I have to draw the line somewhere. I'll roll the perception looking around this room. If that's all right. Yeah, go for it. Checking all the obviously interesting places. Um, looking around, it Bed, doesn't fireplace. look um, like there's anything in here. You see broken toys. Do any of the uh, toys look cool? Um, <laughs> that's a great question. That is a good question. They're they're a little old, but um, I don't know what would be considered cool toys in a medieval. There's like a ball in a cup. There's a, you know that um thing that was like a precursor to a yo-yo that was like it was like two sticks that you could kind of spin the um the wheel back and forth on it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I don't know what it's called, but it's like just a weird little toy. But in term, it really depends on what Gogmer feels is a cool toy. Um, I guess it doesn't really toys. matter. Gogmer's just going to start stuffing all the toys that he thinks are cool in his bag. Yeah, you just you grab a bunch of toys and you shove them in your bag. All right. Come on, Gogmar. We're going to go upstairs. All right. You see him walking out. He's stuffing a doll's head inside of his sack. Can't be just as creepy as what you're doing. Off the doll itself. Well, I thought I packed something for the mold, but I guess I didn't. Yeah. Y'all going up then? Yeah, we're <laughs> going up. We can probably leave the animal companions unless you want to just, or you can bring them up if we get into a fight. Yeah, I can. yeah. Let's uh, look up and see how big it is up there. So I'm gonna line you up so I can just copy and paste you guys. That way they won't just be filling up the hallway. God, where are you guys in this map? It's huge. I'm over here. Oh, wow, this map's textures are taking a while to load. Mm-hmm. This it's break brought to you by Roll20. Mm-hmm. I'll bring you over, but it's going to be a hot minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now it took a while uh, each time we transitioned for the, uh, the texture to load in because... Oh, yeah. oh, it's already done for me. Yep. For the first time, it loaded in immediately for me. Yeah, I'm going to have to reload because the textures are so bad I can't even see where I'm moving you guys. Quick, explore just everything a, real quick. Assume. Just a lovely soup of vomit-colored pixels, eh? <laughs> um, that'd be put into my alley, yeah. So that's your limited image. Roll20 had to censor it for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Roll20 is just loading, but um, yeah, the ma- map's not loading any better. So, that's fun. I'll, just, I'll manage. Just give it a couple minutes. Uh, when I first joined the game, before the call started, um, 
it took like four minutes and then it popped in for me. So it looks like there's a door here, 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 and a corner here. More or summary. less. In summary, there's also a do- here. And there's also a door over here. I pointed to that one first, but yes. Sorry, I didn't see that one. I could, I could just barely see it behind my bars. So many pixels, I swear to God. One person who needs to see the map. Give me a, Can't. give me a second. I'm gonna try something. <laughs> we'll just send you real time screenshots of what we're seeing. So what was the? Um, what's the server cost anymore? I know communities used to run them because I was part of a community that ran a what was it, dystopia server. I don't know. Yeah, it is a good question, but I do not know. I think I think that Forge or whatever attached service for Foundry had uh, was like a similar price to Roll Twenty for a year of service, but it's been a while since I looked at it. Yeah, I'm I'm not against moving away from Roll Twenty. I, I I still don't think it's that bad personally, but. It's 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 not that bad at all. I mean, it's a really useful tool. But if we can find something that does does the same thing, we don't have as many problems with. I mean, I'm yeah, I, I'm probably gonna try Foundry once I'm done with the Rune Lords. But since I put in so much work on it in here, I'm gonna stick with it until I'm done. Yeah, also, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna venture out because I know how to use Roll Twenty. Uh, yeah, yeah and I'm not I, saying I'm gonna never use Roll Twenty again. Like for Five E, it's pretty good, especially since I have all the books. Uh-huh. So, when we play a game where I'm the GM, or if I'm the one that created the game for a 5e game, pretty much all the books, other than the last like two that have been released, like Tasha's and um, one other, I have all the books, so all the spells are all in the compendium, all the um, base classes and subclasses are all in there, so it makes it super easy. Anyway. And that's the one you said where you could copy-paste uh, character sheets, right? Yes. Or NPC stat like, uh, At least for the 2E one, it works perfectly. The 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 1E Pathfinder one, it's still having a couple issues, but it still works. So that's amazing Which, to me. That oh, that is the most time consuming part of planning these games for me yeah. at least. It's shortly uh, met by making the maps. Yeah. But um, that is the most time consuming part. Is just the tedious task of copying over stat blocks. Yeah. Anyway, sorry sorry to delay us, but um, you all are free to do your thing. I'm uh check this door for anything fishy before I open it. No worries. Also, by the way, the sounds of crying have amplified. They are very loud in this floor. Figured. Um. So yeah, you do not detect any traps or anything. In I'll open it. That door. Uh, Suddenly, uh, open it up. There's a bunch of um, wooden planks, rope, repair supplies. Um, the ceiling above kind of sags noticeably, um, but the um, some of them patches of the sky are visible above. Um, and all the all these supplies look relatively new. Like again, another within the last year or so. It looks like these are the materials who probably Aldern and whoever he hired was trying to use to repair this manor of some kind. Gotcha. I think we found the least haunted room. I'm going to step in and hopefully <laughs> the hammers don't animate and beat the shit out of me. No, but the planks do. Oh. <laughs> no. Um, you go into this room and it is exactly what you expect. It's just... Uh, it's basically using a storeroom for all these extra supplies to try to rebuild this place. Yeah, and it's there's quite a lot in this. Like considering it's in the attic, there's quite a lot of supplies. Like mm-hmm. it looks like they never even got started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lucilla's just like this is this is some nice wood. It was, see the flooring they're doing here. It was gonna look nice, you know. I mean, do you see this? This is mahogany. Yeah, mm. they they did not skimp. <laughs> Looks like they're holes. 
Russell Silla yeah. comes from a blue collar background. So, <laughs> she will put her ears against this door and uh, uh nothing. It's also uh, comes from I a no collar background. <laughs> any perceptions you guys make um, mm-hmm. in this floor because of all the crying are going to be at a minus two. Okay. Because it is, it's like that. It's like not even be able to ignore it anymore. It's very loud. Fifth floor. Shove this door open. Open it up. Um, you see um, different things here. Um, bits of old furniture, sheets and linens, crates, boxes, other bits. Looks so like a room storage room. Wants to check it out. I'll check the next one. Move up and repeat the process. Listening. Uh... Um, just to let you know uh, the the sounds of crying you can hear clearly coming down the hallway and mm-hmm. up this way, but that's neither here nor there for now. Yeah. Um, but I'll save you the time for these next couple doors. You open these four down this hallway. They all seem to be similar arrays of storerooms holding various bits and baubles. Hmm. A lot of stuff. Mm. Is this a door back here? No, that is a window. Okay. Do you guys detect anything magical in those rooms? Yeah, I'll, I'll give them a, a hit as I walk by. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, if it's all mundane crafting equipment. To craft a house! <laughs> anything uh, magical? Anything? Um, no, no magic pings or anything. Okay. Wait. Uh, six. Before you open that door, mm-hmm. um, Lucilla takes off her backpack, sets it on the ground. I spend one full action rooting around in there, and I'm going to spend fifty of my hundred gold I set aside. And I am going to pull out a bottle of anti plague. <laughs> just gonna, I'm just gonna take a hit off that real quick. Drown the bottle. Don't tell anyone what I'm doing. All right, good to go. Anti flake. A- anti flake gives me plus five to fortitude saves against diseases <laughs> for oh. an hour. Josh, are gonna uh, listen and listen to the door first. Roll perception. Uh, nice too. Yep. Um, I can cast protection from energy if you guys can come up with the energy type, because Cogmar I don't think would know. Mm, haven't uh, really. Unknown yeah. to yeah. Yeah, you guys haven't really come across any creatures yet. I've mean, uh, heard of a lich, which makes me think cold. But I don't know. Lis- listening into this room, you don't really hear anything of any kind. Okay. Then she'll open the door. Okay. Um, opening this room up, um, you see the the ceiling of this room angles down steeply. Um, the southeastern um, corner of this room only having about maybe four feet of headroom. Um, inside there is a low cot and a dresser, and those are, seem to be the only furnishings of this room. We'll do a quick skim of Detect Evil. Um, yep. As you Detect Evil, um, I will say, as you open this door, um, the creak of the doors that have happened here, this one's creaks just a little bit more, like it hasn't been opened in even longer than the rest of the doors that you've, on this floor. Mm-hmm. And as this door opens with this loud creak, you hear the sobs cease for a moment before a loud screech um, echoes through the hallway before returning back to um, Sobs. Mm. But anyway, quick perception around the room. Mm-hmm. Well, you know yeah. what? Uh, let me let me look at something out of character. How much is some wax? Um, looking around this room. You don't spot much. There's the typical mold that you found throughout this whole building. Um, looking through, and you look, o- you kind of poke open the the, um, the wardrobe looking thing, and inside, what looks to be best way I can describe it is basically butler's clothes. 
but they're very Delicious. old and dingy and mothrin. And delicious floor shrooms. <laughs> That's the mold, yeah. Um, reach and fixes you have the most clear line. You do see three more doors down this hallway. You see one here. And you see two at the end. And the sounds you hear of crying, you can clearly tell are coming from the end of the hallway. He, he's come from down there. We'll work our way there. She'll press her ear against this one and uh, check it. Roll perception. Well, how dangerous could they be? They're crying. Uh, <laughs> knowledge religion to know what a banshee is. Let's go. <laughs> uh, nothing. So it's, she'll open the door. But as you open this door, a desk and a chair sit in the middle of this drafty room. Chimneys rise to the west, while the east two intricate stained glass windows are set into the wall. The northern window depicts a dark-haired woman with pale skin, large green eyes, and a black and red gown. With both hands, she wields a jagged iron staff. The southern window's lower half has been broken and patched with canvas. What remains of the upper half depict a handsome man dressed in regal finery and a crown of ivory and jade. Small scorch marks mar the wood near the broken window. A battered and ruined telescope lies on its side near the desk. And a large trap door in the roof has been shut has been tied shut by several lengths of rope. Um does the figure in the stained glass window the male one looked familiar like the guy they went hunting with? Um, the guy in the stained glass? Yeah. Um, roll me a history check. Um, he, it doesn't just um, look like the guy you went hunting with. It doesn't look like Aldern of any kind. Mm. But you can't quite figure out what these are supposed to be. Hmm. How badly broken is the? You said it was a telescope. Here, let me. Let's all. Because quickly, everyone, into the haunted room. Yes. Oh. Yes, because we're so much safer, single file in the hallway where none of us can see anything. Yeah. How badly broken is the telescope? Um. So as you go and examine the telescope, um. Um, the, the broken telescope on the floor is a magnificent piece of equipment, but um, unless you can find someone who specializes in it, it looks like it is beyond repair. Even by magic, like mending? Um, with a mending spell, you could probably get it back into like working order. It probably wouldn't be as good as it once was, as you'd have to. The magic would have to create some of the pieces that were artisan, like quality, like masterfully made. How about make whole? Uh, make whole could work, yes. What what, is, what level is make whole? I guess this uh, window's where that lady jumped out, right? Um, it's funny you mentioned that as you say that. Um, <laughs> well, damn it, Emmanuel! You kind of like this, right? <laughs> Gogmer, as as you kind of looking at this telescope, you feel suddenly uncomfortably hot. Um, like unbearably so. You you believe you caught fire. Um and you believe the only way to save yourself is to jump through this broken window. Or no, jump through the unbroken window and hopefully into the sea below. Um well, so I, I need you to window. make a will save. Okay. Thank God, I thought you were just going to make me do it. <laughs> I guess she was on fire and just jumped right through this window. I'm going to okay. use my uh, one of my re-rolls, the last one. <laughs> way, way to try to set up the comedic timing there, Cope. I love it. <laughs> um, so, good news is um, you managed to resist this urge. Um, like you actually start moving towards it. Uh, before you're like, wait, I'm a goblin. I love fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> and you begin to realize you were a um, afflicted with another haunt. Um, I will say, out of context, it is a good thing you saved against this, because other than a reflex aid to try to stop you from jumping out, you would have taken 
3d6 points of damage after you broke through. Um, a weathered vein would have attacked you, uh, t- um, dealt damage to you equal to 1d6 plus 7. <laughs> and then if you fail a reflex save, you fall to the, gr- the rocks below and take 20d6 of da- points of damage. Yeah, I'm I figured sure there wasn't much to save you after you actually <laughs> fell out of the window. <laughs> you have a reflex save to not um, completely die from that after that. You can like grab onto the lip. But it's like a two ch- two chances before you just fall to most likely death or at least dismemberment. Yeah. So good move on my part. I'm casting mending on the telescope. Okay. Um, like I said, it doesn't make it perfect beyond um, like what it was originally, but it, it is a functional telescope. It is um, just of normal quality for a telescope, but it's nice. Anything the, um, design again? Is there any kind of maker's mark or anything on it? Um, roll me a perception. Kind of an artisan tool. So. Perception. Um, there is. Um, you can't make out the name as it was one of the pieces that had to be basically remade by the magic. Um, but it has a, um, more or less an address. It's like, you see, um, like after the name has been kind of messed up, um, you see from the care of Magnamar and then it has like basically a street address below it. Mag, what's it? Emmanuel, are you from Magnamar or Malthoon? I forgot which one. Malthoon. Uh, Never mind. Uh, Someone come take a look at this. Yep, what's up? And then I show uh, Lucilla and say, does any of this make any sense to you? Uh, could you repeat what it said one more time for me, Richard? Um, it essentially has an address to Magnamar, um, kind of emblazoned like on like the mark of whoever created it. It doesn't have the name any longer. Mm-hmm. But it, you can kind of surmise that it was made probably by an artisan craftsman in Magnamar some point in the past. Yeah, looks like this is uh, where the person who made this lives in the city of Magnamar. Weren't uh, I know where they went to get like the magistrate or whatever from for sand points? So it's not too far, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the it, capital. It, it's like there, a four right? or five day journey on foot or horseback, I think, from Sandpoint. No, from horseback, mm-hmm. it's like four or five days. Walking oh, takes bad. like twice as long. This entire time, Fix is just looking up at the uh, the ceiling hatch that's roped down. Mm-hmm. I really want to know what's in there. Mm. <coughs> uh, um, you can probably give you a boost. If you have an engineering role, you can make it to try to determine what it was. I can do one of those. Knowledge also, if anyone else wants to do a history check on the... Um, the painting, the uh, stained glass, you can as well. Oh, I guess I'll do a history check on the stained glass instead. I don't think I have history. So. Huh? Yeah, I'll just do a history check on the stained glass. Yeah, yeah I do no need to history. start getting better if you don't have a knowledge roll. You can't actually roll it unless it's a class skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I have no history, which makes sense because, you know, goblin. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, hey, uh, I, I, for- I always forget I have the talent the trait soul, um, avid reader, which means I can always take ten on history check. Okay. So uh, um, that'll that'll change my um. Yeah, that'll um, be a uh, twenty-two. So the um, windows depict two different people um, from history. One is known as Arazni, the Harlot Queen of Geb. Mm-hmm. While the southern one depicts Sakoro, the Butcher of Carrion Hill. Hmm. Let me ah. look these up real quick before I. Put a foot in my mouth about them. Very pleasant, fellas. Um, Sakoro is a debased lich necromancer known as the Butcher of Carrion Hill, who has once been rumored to have served a creature known as the Whispering Tyrant. Hey, I know that guy. <laughs> he likes to be called Bill for some reason. <laughs> we went to high school together. <laughs> He actually goes by Whispering Tyler. (laughs) Um, And then Arazni is a demigoddess of um, the abused and unwilling undeath. 
Um, she is a rich, a rich ruler um, in a nation known as Gurundi, or uh, in Gurundi known as Geb. His family really had a thing for liches. Yeah, as I said, people don't put these kind of stained glass windows in their house if they're not already up to some shady business. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um... Mm, only crying direction left. Ignoring there's, Fix's fixation on the hatch. <laughs> that, there's that way. I mean, we're going to have to confront what's making that sound eventually anyway, guys. Yes, on to our pending doom. I don't know what you guys are worried about. What are you looking at, Fix? The, the hatch in the ceiling that's roped up. The, what's what's up there? I don't know. Top deck? Um, so as you kind of look at it, um, it's not too hard for you to piece together. Um, with the telescope that's um, in this room, it was most likely a latch that would be opened up to allow um, visibility into the sky. Yeah. So you can use the telescope from this room. Except yeah, the skylight. Why would they tie it down like that? So that way the murderous undead birds couldn't get inside when they were doing construction? No, oh, that makes sense. All right, let's move on. <laughs> All right. All right. Ladies first. All right, before we pop open that door, I'm going to cast Mirror Image on myself. Yeah, there's two doors. Well, either way, Mirror Image lasts a bit. Um, um, if it's where you're standing there, you can easily hear the sounds coming from the door to the right of you. It did you know, not roll it for me. Then listen to the door on the left first. Um, you don't hear anything from that room. All right, then push that door open. And a giant baby stabs you. <laughs> um, as you open this room... Um, Shelves of books line the wall in this room, interspersed with curious objects, such as skulls fitted with stubs of candles, tribal fetishes, and decorative scroll cases. An empty birdcage lies near the southern wall behind a small desk and a uh, near a fine leather chair. Um, statues and sculptures grin all, from all corners of this room. She would close the door and say, just a haunted library, nothing big deal in there. Dark library. Kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> I say, she, you, you just hear that from down the hall because there's so many people in front of me. <laughs> she, she would be grinning, knowing full well that she gets some reaction out of somebody. Let's go read some stuff out loud. <laughs> you can actually hear the face palm from Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to check out the Forbidden Library f- before or after we check out this crying door? Nah, let's check out the crying door. All right. Closing this door just in case of wary fireball decides to torch everything. <laughs> and this door. Okay, give me one second. I'm closing the door again. I'm going to be very mad if the AP is all like, this is supposed to be an obvious bad idea that the party should never do. <laughs> I'm gonna I be will really say they, they have that written in player. one time. Mm-hmm. Something similar, but if it's a stupid choice, I've elected to ignore it if a player chooses to do something that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, which, um, the door of the room is clearly locked uh, as you kind of look over at it. Um, the unmistakable sound of a, a sobbing woman can be heard beyond it, though. And that's why she's not bothering to listen because she already knows what's yeah, going on. Yeah, it, you don't have to really roll to listen as it is very clear. It is very loud. All right, you guys ready? You can't oh, see hands. me. But my thumb is up right now. Hands up, would be. All right, chill. You guess the door open. It is locked. <laughs> Uh, I didn't say it's very clearly locked. She would look at the others and just kind of convey, 
Door is locked. Do we have a key? What's the holdup? I thought we were going in. You have a boot, don't you? Make room for uh... Cogburn. I say I'm, this is all bonded mind. Cogburn, can you do anything about that? You're right. You're closer than me. Um, if you toss me your thieves tools. <laughs> You know, five foot square is big enough for four people. All right, make a hole. Yeah. Make a hole. Come on, <laughs> let's go. I mean, to be fair, Lucilla and Gogmer are both easily movable in this space. Mm. Oh yeah, it's only I'll just three places with you. The combat reason is you'd be bumping into each other and thus yeah. lose your dex bonus. Uh, it looks like somebody's casting gravity bow. Yes. All right. Let me see what I can't do. Cause I am a twenty nine. Twenty nine. You're able to fiddle with it, and it just clicks. Mm-hmm. All right, Here you go. So before we get to the elephant in the room, um, holy shit, elephant! <laughs> didn't see that coming. Ghost elephant. Uh, the room wow. itself is cold and damp. There's an old armoire that stands near the east wall. The ceiling slopes down to only four feet in height in the northeast, leaving little room for a small window. Um, there is a full-sized mirror in a dark wooden frame of coiling roses that lean against um, the bricks of the wall, angled toward the tiny window. Um... But what mostly draws your attention, Fitta, um, is this woman. Um, the elephant? She is... Um, That's unkind. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, she is a um, clearly dead woman. Um, you can do a knowledge religion to notice what she is in terms of mechanic-wise. Funny. She is what is known as a revenant. Hmm. Nice. A supernatural what do I know about revenants? Well, let me bring up the thing real quick so I don't put it again put in my mouth. Out of character, revenants are one of those fictional concepts that I always feel like they're underused because they're basically the Terminator. <laughs> most, of um, or most of the time. A revenant's existence is fueled by its hatred for its murderer. Um, as long as its murderer exists, the revenant exists. Oh, they could be. I mean, who murdered them? Oh, so it is kind of like a Terminator. Yeah, that that's it's why like I, an undead hitman. Yeah, in uh, in fifth edition, it explicitly says if you destroy it, it comes back one day later. Mm-hmm. So it's like one of those if you were doing an evil campaign and they really torture and murder someone, make them a revenant, <laughs> and it's just a constant antagonist they cannot destroy. Yeah. Um, and then, um, as you're like looking, in, like she doesn't even rec- like register that you're here. She's just staring at herself in the mirror, kind of like looking at it, and kinda, every now and then reaching out towards it before co- recoiling and like, um, like almost like shame and pity, and begins to cry again. Why don't we shut the door and leave the nice lady alone? She's probably got the key. All right. Let's see. Kill her again? Is there anything I could do to help you? Um, she is not registering. She is well, her space should be technically here. Mm-hmm. Because she's like right next to the she's like next to the mirror just staring deeply and she doesn't register anyone's existence at all at the moment. Fix my cav. Look over her shoulder to Lucilla and do the bonded mind of saying I feel like I should touch her. Put her Put my hand on her shoulder and see if I could get her attention. I mean, do your thing, I guess. And I would like to say that my bonded mind version of saying do your thing, I guess, is me giving a double thumbs up. Since I've got a mirror (laughs) image, it's just four thumbs up. (laughs) Wait, you only have one mirror image? You roll a one, it's 1d4 plus one or something like that. I thought it was, maybe I misread it. Hey, I'm not going to argue. One plus a one d four plus one image per three caster levels. So you should no. have three images. Cool. I'm not gonna. It's even more thumbs oh, yeah. up. I'm not gonna that, argue with more. That's six thumbs or what? Eight, eight. thumbs up. Yeah. Hell yeah. Can't get better than that. That's a big old affirmative. Mm-hmm. Should not and 
you know, step up and cautiously put her hand on her shoulder and try to console her. Um, as you touch her, um, the um, crying ceases as she turns to you. Um, she looks at you. She looks up, looks at all of the rest of you she can see through the door. And she lets out this blood-curdling scream as she screams, I can smell your fear. You'll be in my arms soon as she, we're going to go into initiative. Oh, that gave me the chills. <laughs> oh, damn. I, I don't like ghosts. I knew I should have used the top downstairs. <laughs> Good call not bringing the animal companions up here. It's way too cramped already. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said um, the snake, when he's large, is always going to be squeezing. Uh-huh. Going into descending, it is the creature's turn first. Um, I will say, Lucilla, you recognize immediately that this is the woman you had visions of being murdered. Oh, cool. Um, she is going to enact her baleful shriek ability. Uh-huh. All creatures in a 60-foot spread, which means even around corners and everything, need to make a will save. Is this a fear effect? It is a mind-affecting fear effect. And but within right. 10 feet of it, fix it, get a plus 4 to it. And All right, fix so then into it. Mine will be plus 6 then. Uh, so I am looking at a result of 30. So you're fine. Uh-huh. I guess that's an 18 from a fix. But Saves are auto-fails on 1s, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I, have and I believe Manuel, like, nope, did you roll? Nope. Yeah, 21. Okay. So the well, he's got bigger fails, ears than the rest of you. <laughs> the only one that fails is Gogmer. Gogmer, you are um, cower. You have to cower in fear for one round. So this next turn, you basically have to waste cowering in fear. Hmm. Um, she's going to do that and step over here. Um, I will say, if it wasn't for the fact that this is round one and everyone's considered flat-footed before the act, that would provoke because she's stepping across some boxes. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I only mention that because some c- classes have abilities where they ignore um, flat-footed for surprise rounds or um, first rounds of combat. Yeah. But that will be her go to move here. And it is Emmanuel's turn. <laughs> He will delay, and if you could move him down until after Lucilla. Okay. Dogmer, you're you for some reason are overcome with this feeling of fear. As you have to like, you're like pressed against the side of the wall, kind of like cowering. However, Gogmer would cower. Game over, man. Game over. Probably <laughs> covering its big ears. <laughs> Taking his ears and bending them over his eyes. Yep, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fixa. Alright. Um, you said this is difficult train? Oh, uh, no, only where here? she is. Okay. Because so she stepped I'll... across some boxes and stuff. So, right, so Fix will five foot step over and say, I shall cast you back where you come, and then I shall avenge you and cast Smite. And then, uh, let's see. Flanking. Um. Yeah. Well, uh, um. It was kind of it's an iffy thing with round ones, but it's yeah. fine. I just, I like we had a, an idea that she was going to be threatening. Yeah, um, and also I can't imagine you guys aren't walking through this place with yeah. weapons drawn. Yeah. All right, and then. Uh, I mean, who would walk through a haunted mansion with their sword and their scabbard? Yeah. Right. So scimitar attack. That will then, hit. And then uh, light shield attack. Ooh, that one will hit too. A nice sizable hit, actually. Smite. Um, and this bypasses all um, DR, yeah. right? Yep. Okay. Uh, actually, if she's undead, let me see if that doubles it. Uh... Usually, I think it does. It depends on the archetypes and such. I think it's like undead outsiders. Yep, undead. Yeah. So uh, additional four damage to the first attack. So the first attack was twenty damage. And the second gotcha. attack was eleven. Okay. 
Nice sizable bows from a fixa. Raish, it is your turn. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I'm going to just uh, disrupt undead at it and then pull back because. You, dis you disrupted that undead a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Her body racks a little bit. Like, you see her pinky kind of bend backwards before <laughs> popping back into undead place, like a weird undead creature. <laughs> and then go on to Lucilla. All right, first things first. I'm going to acknowledge religion to see if I can also identify it as a revenant. Go for it. 14. Oh, I have to remember how... Let me... I believe it's 10 versus its CR... And it's like based on like it goes up depending on how rare the creatures are. Yeah. Let's see, monster lore, DC the like, this would be considered um ten plus the monster CR or CR is uh, Oh my god, I got a three. You know what? I'm gonna spend a point to reroll that. Okay. Don't you yeah, get that one knowledge? No, only on history. <clears throat> oh, okay. Twenty three. That Okay, that will be enough. No. It is definitely a revenant. All right. Um, so I'm going to five foot step here. It is going to step up to where you were. Cool. I think that's how that works. Let me double check it. Maybe it's only if they move away from you. Yeah, because I'm still within reach. Yeah, that's that's what I'm like, wait, maybe I did this wrong. Yeah, five foot away from you. Oh, well, you guys know she has to step up. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not a huge deal. Because <laughs> there's so much room to maneuver. Um... And then I will begin the first round of my naturalist to give everyone a plus two to their AC and attack rolls. Including are undead this. immune to sneak attack? I forgot. No, they are not. We no, God. we discovered this in ghosts are, but that's about yeah. it. Um, and then I yeah. say to the revenant, you know, if you're looking for the guy that killed you, I'm pretty sure he's in the basement. Kind of, and isn't that like the revenant thing? You're you're hunting the guy that that killed you. Yeah, she kind of flashes a glare at you, but otherwise doesn't respond. Hey, listen, I had a psychic vision where I saw it from your perspective. As far as I'm considered, you you've done nothing wrong. <laughs> Emmanuel. All right, Emmanuel will swift action give himself uh, animal focus. Uh, I think it's Tiger for Dex. And then he will move up. And used his move action to get here. Oof. And then he will f shout to a fixa, giving her covering fire. Plus two days, see if he can hit, and then he will take a shot. Gotcha. 27 to hit. That will hit. 16 damage. 16. Ping is against her shoulder and she just jerks back, but she just kind of rights herself. That your turn? Yep. Yeah. Five foot up. And is going to a full attack of manual. So that'll be two claws. 18 will miss. 19, man. Terrible rolls. Phew. And then she will stay put. Gobbert, you can move again. If you're there, Michael. And he unmute himself. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I don't think there's... Can, I don't think I could... Yeah, no, there's no way I can get over there if they're... The Revenant's right there. You could acrobatics through her space. I don't think Ugmer has a very good acrobatics. Let me check. Yeah, no. He has a plus five. I would risk just taking a hit to not move. All right. Hmm. 
I will, I guess in the meantime, I will back up a space and I will use my spontaneous casting to use a second level spell slot to cast Flame Blade. So I'll stretch your arm and out pops basically a lightsaber of fire. Fix a right. fix will enter uh, uh, what was it disrupting shield style or uh, what was it called upsetting so, uh, shield style? And just let you know, you won't be able to five foot here because that will be difficult ah. terrain. Okay, so then move up and then uh, single scimitar attack, uh, power attack. That'll hit, oh. damn. Your attack rolls. Mm-hmm. It helps that I'm getting some nice bonuses from Smite. Yeah, and mm-hmm. for me. <laughs> Get a plus two from me, don't forget that. <laughs> yep, I applied it. Reesh. Come on, get on in here, everybody. <laughs> the water's fine. She can't do shit. Gana? If I unmute myself, and I'm just ready in action to uh, cast Disrupt Undead in case she comes through the door. I don't think she will, and I don't think I'm going to get in there. No worries. One second. Why is this not working right? Okay. Fun fact if you have two macros with the same name, they don't work right. Interesting. I'm oh, sorry. So, um, Reese, you said you just step back. It's ready in action. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I, I missed that because I was fiddling with. Behind the scenes, though. Mm-hmm. Lucilla. All right. I'm going to five foot step here. Uh, and then I will uh, full defense. So that will boost my AC by an additional four. So let's see. It's first plus two for Bardic and then plus four for full defense. That makes me. Oh, no, it's, it's higher than that, because full defense is normally plus four, and then my feet makes it plus six. So I'm actually at uh, 27 AC, and then both Emmanuel and Afixa get plus three AC in addition to the plus two from my bard. Okay. Tank mode, activate! <laughs> and Got then your back, Emmanuel's turn. He's muted. Oh, sorry, didn't hear that. Um, bong. He will pull his dueling sword. Or should I tumble? Hmm. Let's have some fun trying acrobatics through there. Nah, but one. then who would come up and fight? Nah, one, nah, one, nah. Well, well then Gogmore could get involved. I mean, yeah. he does have his flame blade activated. Yeah. Yep. We're going acrobatics. Do, do, do. Okay, roll that acrobatics. See if you can get Even through. Even though I'm not trained in it. That will fail. As you oh. try to go back, it will provoke. You can't stop me. Does he still move or is his movement halted? His it's movement halted. is halted. Gotcha. I love the fact that you went to go like a forward oh. handspring and then you just get gently pushed in the chest and it fails. That was rude. That will hit. Um, but doesn't seem to do anything to her as it just slashes across her with no effect. Uh, uh, question. Hmm? The plus one longsword, is that no longer magical? Um, no. Um, I believe with the um, automatic progression, it's you choose a weapon at the beginning of each day to be magical. But I could be wrong. Okay. I'll look that up when we're done with here. I don't want to stop combat yeah. now. But yeah. 
Her turn. She is going to full attack Emmanuel. Your AC is boosted. Don't forget it. I think that still goes through, though. Hey, uh, how much is it boosted by? Uh, plus two for my bardic, plus three for my dodging. So five total. Then he will use... Uh, as an immediate action. Stone shield to add plus four AC as a stone comes up from the floor. Yeah, she just flat win. You just hear the sound of shattering glass and toppling furniture as it springs through the floorboards. Oh, crap. I didn't know I could really <laughs> do that. <laughs> Um, you cannot use the spell if you are not adjacent to a large area of stone or earth, such as the ground or a wall. What's the walls made out of? The walls are made out of stone, so I was just double checking. <laughs> uh, I didn't think even to read it. The wall just so happens to collapse in his direction. The uh, uh, it will you, then Russ attack. The, yeah, the she attack uh, then attacks the stone shield. Hardness of eight with her So yeah, the stone is still up. Um, for basically this reaction till the beginning of your next turn. So there's a wall between you. So she is going to instead turn and attack a six. Throw out an attack on you. Let's see it. That's and we'll miss. miss. We're going to make it Richard so that she doesn't hit anyone. Probably not. <laughs> Has she not been damaged yet? Oh no, she's been oh, she's fix been wrecked. Fix has been laying oh. into her hard. Yeah. Okay, I can't see her bar. And, and, and you, I saw. Yeah, and uh, you did damage to her as well. So. I saw the halflings. Gogmer. Uh, let me see. What you what gonna do? Be about casting it? time. Uh, lame. Kool Aid Here's what I'm gonna wall. do. <laughs> what? I said just Kool Aid Man through the wall. Oh yeah, I'm casting Burrow. And then I'm gonna use my big mole hands to punch my way through that wall. That'll let me get through five feet of that with the movement from the burrow. Like, so you're going outside the wall to the north? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to jump out the window, so it'll jump out the wall. Yeah, uh, I thought, wait, no, did way. I miss something? I thought you put up a wall, a wall of stone betw in between you. Oh, to go th uh, the wall between the two of you, but you would have nowhere to go once you go through that wall. Oh, yeah, and that would use the movement, huh, if it's five yeah. feet of... Uh, why yeah, you, you could probably go you, this way. And yeah, why don't you just behind. go through the other wall in the room? Yeah. You can, yeah, you can go around into this room here and then burrow through that way. It's That's creative thinking. I mean, my only other idea was to climb through the windows because I saw how there was a roof on the outside, but... I just didn't want Gogmar to go flying from the fourth floor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you guys think that that was this is the direction I'm going. Because <laughs> it would have been memorable. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I kind of want to now because the viable strategy here is the outside of the building strategy. <laughs> She'll never just, see it coming. Just go through this wall down here and you'll you'll be within melee range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I do love the idea of a goblin growing giant mole hands and straight jumping through a wall, and he's straight <laughs> falling off a cliff, and he's grinning to himself like, she'll never see this coming. There you go. That's a movement and a standard. Standard to get through the wall, movement to get over there. And Burrow, it actually goes through and like damages the wall as you turn, turn it up and makes a hole, right? Yep. Okay, so something else is going to happen instead. Give me a second. Yeah, then you're telling me worse. damaging the infrastructure of a haunted house is probably not a good idea. That's um, somebody who ran the uh, one shot uh, preceding uh, the Curse of Straw campaign. Yeah, bad things happen when you try to go through a haunted house wall. Let's see. So. But I do get through, right? I'm in the right place. Maybe. Depends Maybe. on how this okay. passes. You might get cast into a different plane. Oh my! I would love it if it just teleports you to a random other wall in the house. And he Guys, I like swear I do downstairs. not try to kill my characters. I and swear I want every single one of them to live into the so, the I am going to let you know I am not going to use Phantasmal Killer on you right now. <laughs> oh God! Jesus. Because the DC is very high and that seems mean. 
Oh, Jesus. Is that what it says in the book? Yes. <laughs> Captain level 15. Jesus. Good lord. So, no, so still, good lit. still deadly, but still better the alternative. It's going to dominate you, try to dominate you and tell you to jump out the window. <laughs> so you got so, two different types of As ones. you start digging through it, I need you to make me a will save. Sorry, I'm I'm really I, I'm telling you now. I didn't want to do Phantasmal Killer because the DC is fairly high. No, I I get it. if it says Phantasmal Killer in the book, you're being nicer than I would have been. Yeah, I. So well, I'll I would have hit you with the. Fa- I'm gonna be honest. I would have hit you with the Phantasmal Killer. Yeah, same, so I'll tell you right honestly. now. These are the things that it could do to you, depending on how severe the damage to the house is. Fear, confusion, Phantasmal Killer, dominate person, or charm monster. It depends on where you do it and how strong the damage is. All right. Burn the house down could have been really bad. So it's a will save, you said? Will save, yes. 21. 21. Let me double check because that might actually pass. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. When I run these APs, I'm just going to do it whatever the book says. It doesn't matter if it's deadly. It doesn't matter if you guys will just cream it. A Pathfinder encounter building makes my head spin. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with what they writ written. And down. I have to say the fact that he rolled a twenty one at level what six mm-hmm. and he has to check it. Oh yeah. Fuck. <laughs> so let's see. This is yeah, a this fourth is a- level no this would be a fifth level spell. Cause they don't give the C- the D C on this, but I know it's pretty high. Mm-hmm. Really, they have those spells, but they don't list out the DCs for them? Yeah, it's because they don't expect people to actually try to burn down a, or destroy mm. a haunted mansion. Do they not know? Well, there goes plan B. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that was a bad thing. I mean, out of character, I would be So that, that would just be the AC, or the DC. Yes. You just make it. So you are able to get through the wall. Please tell me you scream, oh yeah, as you come through. <laughs> Oh yeah! <laughs> also, I never realized Phantasma Killer can just outright kill a person. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, how, that's what it does. Spelly, what, what was the DC on Phantasma Killer? Out of curiosity, if you don't mind, Let me double check for you. Yeah, it's Phantasma Killer. Really. Um, it actually would have been twenty. Dominate oh, person okay. a, a, a point higher. See? Like the DC for Dominate person was exactly twenty-one. So yeah, you're, that does take your action and movement, but you are back there now. And then fix the kills at this turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. I mean, if you get a crit, maybe. Yeah. Uh, full round attack. Uh, scimitar. And. <laughs> well, I mean, she's not dead, her. but. <laughs> call that does confirm. He does have more, so it's thirty-two right. points. And then shield. <sighs> Describe your kill. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gogburn. So, um, as she kind of lashes out towards a fix, as she kind of uh, bats aside with the shield and uh, kind of does a uh, stem to stern upper sweep with her uh, scimitar before backhanding with the shield on the backswing, kind of cut her almost in a cross pattern. The last one kind of. You hear a violent crunch as the shield kind of catches her neck and causes it to bend in a very uh, unnatural position. Mm-hmm. Well, our Did Godmert notice that he was uh, that he was being someone was tra- or said the house or whatever was trying to dominate him? Oh yeah, very much so. You heard a man's voice speak to you as you went through the wall, and it's basically screaming, "How dare you!" Jump the jump out the window and end your miserable life. But doesn't matter because you're like fuck that noise. You know you could have told me that you had it handled. <laughs> and spare you the to- chance to dive through a wall like that. That was one hell of an entrance. How are we supposed to know you could do that? I don't know. 
use your uh, use your uh, critical thinking, critical thinking skills. There you he's, go. He's dead. The body is just slumped to the ground. But two of you had rolled well enough so that a revenant never truly stays dead while its murderer is still yeah. at large. So it probably is one of those things where they might come back after a day or so. Yeah, we just bought time. Let's uh, search right. her in this entire room for a key. <laughs> yep. I'm Maybe. way ahead of you. I no check of the room. Careful this, checking that mirror. Um, looking over this room, um, you do not find anything except for what's on her. Let me just double check what's on her. Whole lot of nothing, actually. Yeah. yeah, it looks like she, like looking around, you see what was clearly like some kind of sheet that she was wrapped in when she was brought up here, when most likely when she was killed. Uh, she's wearing some rather nice um, Veresian clothing mm-hmm. that has seen better days, obviously. But other than that, it's not a whole lot in this room. Well. Spooky library, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah! Fix would, t- Fix would take a moment to check the mirror, though. Um, Reesh, as you enter this room, mm-hmm. um, you begin to see visions enter your mind, dozens of memories of expeditions, sea voyages, travels to exotic locales race through your mind. Um, all the while uh, eventually coming back to settle down here in Varesia. Um, as these memories build momentum, they become increasingly infused with a sense of bitter disappointment and regret. Mm. Um, you become increasingly aware that you're now receiving memories that were, that either never were or memories of fantastic discoveries that, um, you could have made if you had not chosen to settle down with your shrill harpy of a wife. I need you to roll me a will save. As you feel this growing bitterness um, grow, you manage to shrug it off um, before you take the wisdom damage. <laughs> uh, Reach, why are you staring at me like that? Mm, clawed ahead, like mm, bad, bad thoughts. Yes, he's probably what his name. But um, books, yes, books. Yes, good books. I just think about baseball whenever that happens. <laughs> um, I guess Gogmart would mention to Afixa, because I'm still waiting to see what happens with that mirror. Uh, Gogmart says, I, I can't do that again, though. The Whatever the... Uh, what did Reese call it? The, the Lich? It has some kind of control over the, over the house. When I broke through the wall, it tried to cast some sort of enchantment on me. Yeah. As you're both in this room, you're the only two still like the hole that he made in the wall. You see the bricks and mortar and like wood and stuff begin to slowly inch ever so slowly back to fill the hole that you had made. Fix would be just cast around like, yeah, plan B is obviously out. At least until we take out this lich. Yeah, that's true. I, I sincerely hope it's not a lich. I really hope it's knowledge. Huh. I say we still burn this thing down afterwards just for prosperity's sake. No complaints from me. So, um, as you, uh, the rest of you entered this other room, mm-hmm. this uh, study, are you guys just there, like looking around? Is there anything in the mirror here that she was um, looking at? Roll me a perception. Um, looking at it, it looks looks like it's just a nice mirror. It definitely a Veresian design and make. Um, you make it makes you think that maybe this mirror was originally belonging to whoever the revenant was before. Nice. Um, and it's like you can kind of just get the sense that um, knowing what you know about the revenants, they have um a point of self loathing, um that renders them helpless until it's um, intervened. So, looking at what she was doing, her self-loathing was more like most likely the fact that what she has become, having become an undead, and Veresians 
bean followers, a lot a lot of them of Desna, don't really care for Undead. Yeah. So just the fact that she was one kind of gave her a sense of remorse. So it would uh, wind up her or wind back her shield as though she's ready to break the mirror, and then kind of remember what Godmert said and said, just kind of. I'll make an effort by laying the mirror face down on the ground. What's your strength score? Um, 10. Okay, yeah. If you were lower than 10, I'd say you have a little issue with it because it's a full body mirror. Mm-hmm. And it's like a nice heavy one, but you're able to do it with a couple sec- a couple minutes of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, just... Meanwhile, library... Yeah! yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm scanning everything with the check magic. I'm looking for journals, manifests, keys. So we'll go, we'll go through things as it goes. Um, funny pictures. You do detect some magic. Awesome. Um, you look, it's like kind of mixed in with some of the books and stuff. You look around, um, you see um, old accounts of safaris, expeditions, odd excerpts of the Pathfinder Chronicles. Mm-hmm. Um you see um, many books on Shawanti tribal cultures and history, um, numerous maps of the realms and nautical charts, none of which seem to particularly valuable, but you see a scroll case that contains more than just maps as you open it up. You see a couple scrolls inside that the magic kind of pinged off. Nice. Um, they, if, you have, if anyone has read magic or a spellcraft, you can determine what they are. Uh, I do have read magic, but I can also do massive boosts to spellcraft. Yeah, so um, these are a scroll of lightning bolt mm-hmm. and a scroll of keen edge. I imagine they're probably wizard spells. I believe so. Rish. I know lightning bolt is. Yeah, I don't think keen edge is a bard spell. Mm-hmm. Not that I can learn them anyway. Rish, got something you might be interested in. Mm-hmm. And then otherwise, if anyone wants to roll me just general perceptions as well. Mm-hmm. As you're looking through the books in the room. Yeah. Oh, damn. You find everything. I, I should have wrote. I should have rolled professional librarian, too. <laughs> this is yeah. This is your bread and butter. You you you've been dreaming of a room like this since you started adventuring. OK. Uh-huh. Um, there's odd dozens, a bunch of curious like fetishes and masks. Um. The most impressive piece that you see is an old painting of a bullfight. Mm-hmm. The painting bears a plaque that reads Throwdown in Swine Town. And in the painting, vast crowds jeer and cheer the bullfighter as the huge bull arc t- towers over him. Um, dozens of bodies lie in the streets of this painting. The, the auroch has clearly rampaged through them already. And score and a score of brightly covered spears jut from the flanks and back of this creature that still rages forward. Um, this painting, um, with that perception, um, is a original work by a re- renowned Magnumari- Magnumarian artist known as Andesalo, mm-hmm. who um, was a popular artist about 30 years ago before his death, whose paintings have traveled all across the world. It is worth about 1,600 gold. <laughs> I'll just tell you that now with that big of a perception. Uh-huh. Um, in addition, oh. um, there is a wall behind um, the painting. As, like, as you kind of move it around, and mm-hmm. you notice there's a loose brick, a small hollow with a secret niche um, built into the house. Inside, it contains three stacks of of coins, about 20 platinum pieces in all. Two vials of some um, liquid of some kind. Um, and a copper key. Uh, is, is anyone putting this down on a, a, a loot sheet? Yeah, I've been running on, on cool. in notepad. Um, Richard, I had a quick question. Um, would it be possible, because Gogmert is a goblin, for that when he makes scrolls, because they de- require an amount of deciphering, he makes them in such a way that he doesn't actually use writing? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, uh, goblins aren't really the best writers in general from the lore, if I understand. 
So it could just be his own chicken scratch that he knows. Yeah. It's just arcane ways his own. Because it, it's against uh, it's against his religion to wreath <laughs> stick figures. I I I hadn't thought about that before, but I do love a character now whose scrolls are actually just really rude drawings of what he's going to do to his enemy. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was imagining. Like, like his, that is... his flame, his flame blade. Like he made his flame blade scroll. It would just be like a little stick figure goblin with a dope ass like <laughs> flaming sword drawn on it. Yeah, check out my scroll of unnatural lust. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is both. Disturbing and anatomically incorrect. <laughs> Anything we can roll to identify the liquid? Um, you can do a um, a knowledge nature or a craft alchemy or something. Else, anything else you can think of that might apply to something like that? Knowledge nature twenty four. Twenty four. Um, you open these vials and kind of sniff at it. And you have to like pull your face away from it as it's so yeah. strong. Like any good person that understands um, chemicals, you don't just like put your nose in it. You do like a quick whiff as it goes by your nose. Yeah, but like, even that is really strong. This is a drug known as Pesh. Oh yeah, Pesh. Huh. Uh, these are very old. Like when this house was created, old. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't know if. Either this this pesh is either more potent or completely useless by now. What is the <laughs> effects of pesh normally? I, I'm normally, to the effect of pesh is you get one d two bonus to strength and a minus two penalty on saves versus illusion mind affecting effects. Mm-hmm. Um, and after an hour, you get um, two, one to two hours of fatigue and take one d two con and wisdom damage. Nice. So it's like liquid cocaine. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> It's um, yeah. it's the, it's similar to the drugs that they um, like opium. Mm-hmm. It's a hallucinogenic that it causes euphoria, paranoia, and enhanced aggressiveness. Hey everybody, I struck drugs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Never messed with them. <laughs> Anyone in, in, up for a good night of fun? <laughs> I wear my sunglasses at night. <laughs> so uh, you can I al- what? I also found this key about 40 Add platinum tears. 40 <laughs> platinum coins and hold on one second and I just like take the wooden frame of the painting and I just pop the actual canvas out and roll it up. Yeah, as you do. Mm-hmm. The, the, the actual nice. frame itself isn't worth anything anyway. Yeah, and I you said there was a case with scrolls in it, so that means there's like a scroll tube in here? Yes. I put the painting in that. Easy enough. Mm-hmm. Huzzah. All right, uh, let's see here. There's some... I'm, yeah, I'm interested in some of the stuff on Shawanti culture. Uh, this window out here faces the, uh, the land, like where we came from the house. It's like, it's just a slanted roof down to the ground. Um, mostly, yeah. I, I like to imagine that Lucilla is kind of peeking up over to the desk to look out the window and yep. Fix will put her hand on her she's like, D- don't jump, don't jump. You, you'd have to actually wipe it clean to see out of it, but uh, do you do that? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, you look out and it just goes down to the floor below. Awesome. Uh, and this window opens, right? Yes. Don't let the birds in. No, 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 don't worry. I got a plan. If anyone's got like a burlap sack, I'm gonna like load it with some books, and I'm, then we're gonna huck it out this window, and I'll just be in front of the mansion for when we leave. This is raining out there, though, isn't it? Oh shit! Yeah. Ah. Oh. You can always come back to this room before you leave. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna. If anyone's got a burlap sack, I'm gonna take this stuff downstairs, you know, in the, like the, the entry hall. Anyway. That works. Also, this painting is worth a small fortune, but. <laughs> One of a kind. I took an art history class once. I took, I mean, didn't inside. pay for. Yeah. <laughs> you literally took the class with you. Yeah. <laughs> Blanket's probably back at the end where I left it bundled up in the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? If we don't have a bag, it's fine. Everyone, just grab these books. I just start handing out books for people to help me carry downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you you picking out ones in particular, or you just say yes, books? No, no, ones in particular. I'm not going to. Okay. Yes. Uh, I imagine you're leaving a lot of the um, stuff that doesn't really matter too much. Like, um, like old, there's old, the only things that are really noticeable, like I said, are the old accounts of safaris and expeditions mm-hmm. into the Mwangi expanses, as well as, um, I can't remember the one, the, the, the desert area. Yeah. As we fill up my backpack. Um, Music try, starts playing. As you try to hand Gogmert a book, he says, I respect your life decisions, but I can't condone them. <laughs> I don't. He hands Gogmert the drugs and said, like, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gogmer, I don't get you sometimes, but I suppose that's okay. Man, my librarian friend is gonna flip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had all the words in my head, so I was able to fight off the lich. Or whatever it is. I, I guess we're thinking positively right now. Oh yeah, I forget that's how goblins think of it is if you write words down, they leave you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! (laughs) Weirdly enough, that would make them fantastic at dealing with Fae. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) In some settings, they are like a subspecies of Fae. Yeah, it's because... They're like like the Fae that even the Fae don't want, so they just shoo them out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in the the other setting where I'm working with the other group, they are currently dealing with some goblins who work for a fae called the Goblin King. And I told them, I'm like, I'm not saying it's David Bowie. I'm just not saying it's not David. I was about to say, <laughs> if it's not David Bowie, I'm going to be disappointed. Just between us, it's totally David Bowie. By the way, if he doesn't have an orb that he spins around his ha- hand as he talks to people. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, hey, Richard, when you uh, do stuff in that setting, just remember, David Bowie exists. (laughs) I mean, in our hearts, David Bowie exists everywhere. Yeah. He's legend. (laughs) Anyway, um, pile up with some... He's even Nikola Tesla in one movie. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Pile up all the books, take them downstairs. Yep, yep. Got the key. (laughs) From some gentle nagging of Lucilla, you all take stacks of books. Mm-hmm. Uh, or at least most of you, maybe not Gogmert, because he doesn't condone that shit. No, God, Gogmert won't stop any of you guys from taking all the books you want, but he's not, he's not going to carry them out for you. <laughs> um, but you're able to load them back up. Um, yeah, not load is, them back up, but load I'm, them I'm up. Not a- I'm not expecting anything mechanical benefit from this. It just it's a very in character. No, thing that that's do. completely fair. But you take them back down to the bottom, or not the mm. bottom floor, but the ground floor. Kind of drop them off near the door, probably away from the thing that caught Gogmer on fire. Yep. It's it's probably not a lot. It's probably maybe like a baker's dozen or so of books. You know, <laughs> it's roughly between twelve to twenty four. I'm not going to give you an exact number, but yeah. it's not unbearable to carry. Mm-hmm. But you take them down and put them back down. I imagine you're going back down to the basement, though. Yeah. Now that we have the boss key. (laughs) Uh, By the way, Lucilla and Gogmert being in the same party is a fire of Alexandria waiting to happen. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Lucilla isn't quite like Amadeus that just wants to sit in a place and read books. She only likes Mm -hmm. books because the practical knowledge you can extract from them. You know, yeah, and the practical knowledge it will extract from your brain. I mean, I'm just gonna <laughs> say this: is I have previously established in a start of session question before that she's the type of person that doesn't use bookmarks; she just folds the corners of the book. So she's not that much of a library nerd. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't do that in real life. That shit's heretical. So are you all going down the hallway? Yeah, yep. I was wondering because Gogmert's over there with the kitty cat still. Here's the key fix. I don't mind if you put the books in uh, Juan's saddlebags as long as I don't have to read them. Well, leave them in the... You got a pro- why, why does everyone have a problem with reading? <laughs> oh, it's boring. I don't mind it. Thank you. Yes. Not much else to do in the church, to be honest. 
And I, I wasn't including you in that, Rish. We've had the conversation. Mm. So as you turn the key and you open this door, you actually have to take a moment to like push this door as it's so it's very heavy. And you open up into this room. Um, fix you're the first person, the person to get a full eyeful of this. This looks looks to be some kind of arcane work. It wants to uh, looks to have once been some sort of arcane workshop, although it is now lies in ruins. Rows of soggy books sit on the northern end of the workbench along the western wall. At the other end of the workbench, what looks to be three iron bird cages sit, each containing a dead, diseased rat. To the east, another two stained glass windows loom. The northern window depicts a thin man with gaunt features drinking a foul-looking brew of green, green, green fluid, while the southern one shows the same man but in an advanced state of decay as if he had been dead for several weeks, his arms raised and head thrown back in triumph. His rotting body turns to smoke and spirals into a seven-sided box. And we'll go ahead and leave it there for next... It's not a box, then. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But we we will leave it there for next session. Fun fact, I will just tell you now, this isn't the end of the dungeon. Yeah, I had a feeling.